What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. So you might notice that the uh, the layout here is a little different. Um, so for those of you who don't know, there is a patch coming out tomorrow. Well, uh, if you're watching this video, you'll probably be watching it tomorrow, in which case today. Uh, yeah, so 256 cards uh, are getting balanced or changed or reworked, some, some form of that uh, tomorrow or today or whenever. Um, so yeah. That's a lot of changes, and I went over all of them on stream. Granted, uh, I'm not going to re-record all changes because it took me three and a half hours, so uh, I'm going to have that uh, right here. So basically, this is going to be a very, very long video on my opinions and my first like initial impressions on um, the balance patch on top of uh, new Northern Realms cards. In the description below, I will have timestamps for all the factions and the neutrals, because watching a three and a half hour video straight, it's a long, long video. So I don't expect anybody to do that. I understand. Uh, I would be very surprised if anybody watched all of it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put this up anyways. Uh, doing like seven individual videos would be too much and it's not worth it. And it's just like, no, no, I don't know. I just decided if there's anybody out there who's really interested to hear what I think, uh, they can watch this video or portions of the video, maybe their favorite faction is Northern Realms, and they just want to hear my opinions on Northern Realms, then they can skip to X minutes. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this very long video. Um, I hope to do more videos now that this balance patch hopefully will push uh, other archetypes. Um, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys on the next one. This is patch 3.1. Um, should we have music? I'll just keep the music low. So, yeah, there's 256 changes. This is gonna take, uh, a little bit of time. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get right into it. So, uh, all premium cards from Syndicate Expansion are now available. Pog. Uh, reworked filters and deck builders. That's nice. Uh, I'm not gonna read all of this. Okay, message has been removed from social is kind of cute, I guess. Uh, removed reach from everything. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, reach was removed from the game. Uh, reach no longer exists. It's just like, it doesn't exist. It's completely gone. Uh, it's no longer a word that you will see in the game. Um, so now they're adding like roll lock to a lot of cards. So an example would be like light long ship now is range lock. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, cards are now locked to certain rows. Uh, Northern Realms cards have full mill value for five days. Basically, I believe any card that got changed, not necessarily buffed, but uh, like like a full rework. Um, because in theory, you could look at it maybe, I don't know, maybe Winch was your favorite Northern, Win Northern Realms card and you just love this card and it got reworked. And now, shucks, you can't play Winch anymore. So you get full refund. Um, yay. <laughs> All right, new feature, Syndicate Leader in the game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a uh, DJ Spotlight. You guys can go check that out. Uh, I believe he is 15 provisions. He has five charges. Each charge um, gets one coin. And every time you play a crime card, uh, you increase that charge by one. So he starts at five, which is worse than Gud Run, obviously, uh, in terms of total amount of coins you can get. But if you play, like, I don't know, two or three crime cards, then it's okay. Um, and you can kind of space out the times when you get the coins. You don't have to build them all at once with Bincy. Um, is that worth it? I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Uh, is it better than King of Beggars? Maybe. The thing is, crimes aren't that popular right now. You don't play too many. You, you play a few. You play Slander. You play the one that gives you four to six coins. Um, you could start playing Justice because it's a really good card, uh, but that's really up to the deck. Um, special Arena Mode, cards revealed in kegs. Now, okay. All right, let's get right into it. Neutral, Alzer's Double Cross. Provision change from 98. Uh, so ADC is uh, thinning, tall thinning at that. Um, yeah, it looks like thinning is getting cheaper. There's a bunch of thin cards that are all going down one provision, which is nice. Uh, it means if you do want to add consistency, I mean, we can jump to this one down here. Uh, Fables is going from 11 to 10. Uh, consistency is going to be a little cheaper, and that's nice. Uh, you don't get 
screwed over on provisions if you're trying to play like a more consistent deck so i like adc going down i'm assuming marching orders is also going to be going down yep right here marching orders is also going down one provision so that's nice uh, alzer's thunder provision down from six to five so this is a change they actually did a couple patches ago uh, it was in the original like changes but they ended up not pushing it through um i don't know if that was public information or not whatever um so yeah, Alzer's Thunder is going from 6 to 5. So Thunder is now a 5 for 5. Uh, they mentioned in the dev stream that they wanted to uh, lower the damage on bronzes. So if you notice, when we get to the Savage Bear, and SK can no longer do as much damage as it used to do. Um, they want to keep the threshold of bronze damage to... I, it looks like 3. None of the bronzes really do more than 3 damage. Um, unless it doesn't have a body. So Alzer's Thunder does not have a body attached to it. So it is just a 5 for 5. Um, and because removal is getting nerfed, uh, maybe this card actually starts seeing play. If there's a lot of removal, or sorry, if there's a lot of engines being played in the meta, um, maybe Northern Realms is busted. I mean, if you've already read Northern Realms, Northern Realms is really good. It's got a lot of really good cards, um, and changes. So, maybe you start running Alzheimer's Thunder, maybe you actually need the removal. Um, it's playable now. You, you might actually consider it, uh... We'll see. Artifact compression provision change from six to five. What does this card do? It, well, uh, I think it resets it and locks it. So yeah, uh, I mean the only place I would think this card would see play would be like a no unit deck before the uh, minimum unit restriction. But because they changed that, uh, I don't know why you would ever play this card. So yeah, I don't think this card will see any play uh, unless. Yeah, just play Arden. I don't know. I was going to say if mm, Boost and R is really popular, but you can just play Arden. Bomb Heaver. Power change from 3 to 4. Um, so this is neutral artifact removal. It's now a 4 for 5, worst case scenario, which is quite good. It's one of the better artifact removal in the game now. A little worried about this, just because, you know, I do like playing artifacts from time to time. Playing Eldane and seeing Bomb Heaver is going to suck, but uh, yeah. Maybe people play fewer summoning circles, which I guess is a good thing. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I had probably a good change because it doesn't look like they're nerfing summoning circle for whatever reason. Um, so, if this directly brings down summoning circle play, I guess I'm happy. Carlo added melee restriction to ability. So, this is an example of uh, them adding Rolock to a card. It doesn't really change anything. You almost always played Carlo or Cleaver, as it used to be called, uh, on the melee row. So it's not a huge change. Commander's Horn provision changed from 11 to 10. This doesn't do very much. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say about it. Uh, card kind of sucks. It's a 10 for 10 now. But you need 5 units. And yeah, it's just not worth it. No one's going to play this card. Uh, Elder Bear power change from 5 to 6. So this is a neutral card. This card is 6 provisions. Uh, it's now a 6 for 6. Wow. We just have neutral 6 for 6s. So if you don't have any 6 drops in your deck, or you need a 6 provision card in your deck, and you're looking for something, you just play this card. It's a 6 for 6. That's great. I mean, sure, it's proactive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you need proactive, like, medium-sized plays in your deck, Elder Bear is a great card. It's just good enough. Uh... The reason you wouldn't play this is because all your sixes in your deck are seven value. Other than that exact reason, yeah, it's just a good enough card, six for six. Unless, I just realized this, uh, Vainglory kills a beast. So if everybody starts playing this card and Vainglory starts popping up, uh, you start popping off Elder Bears. So I guess keep that in mind. I doubt people will go to that extent to counter a six, but eh, you never know. Uh, XD and Geralt. Uh, these these are big changes. So uh, ability threshold increased from 8 to 9. Uh, this, is, this is a very large change. Uh, the reason this is so large is you can now tactical advantage a 3 strength unit and it doesn't get XD or Geralt, uh, which is really nice. Um, do note most of the engines that you were going to TA got boosted or buffed from 3 to 4. So <laughs> uh, yeah. If you're still planning on boosting one of those engines that got buffed from 3 to 4, you're still in range. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, but you can throw it on a 3, and it won't walk into Geralt or uh, Ike of Denzel. So, uh, a nice buff. Uh, Leo is strictly better than Geralt. I mean, it typically was, but whatever. 
I, I don't I don't know if Leo has changed from eight to nine. I, I guess we'll we'll find out if we get there. Uh, Golden Froth provisions changed from six to five. Golden Froth uh, boosts three units by two. Um, so this is kind of nice. Uh, you're getting we're we're walking into the realm of getting more than what you pay for, uh, which is kind of crazy. Um, there's another well. I guess I could jump. Nah, it's down here. You guys can't actually see that. But Swallow also got chained. Swallow is a very uh, similar card to Golden Froth in that they both give uh, six boosts. They're just uh, boosted differently. Instead of three units, it's one unit. But yeah, you can get a six for five. Uh, if you just want to add raw points to your deck, you just throw Swallow into it. Um, obviously, the downside is tall removal. And the bigger downside is Erden. Um, Northern Realms got enough buffs, and a lot of them are boosting buffs, that Erden might actually be decent. Uh, Erden's very good against SK because of Priest. But yeah, if people start playing Swallow and Northern Realms is pretty popular, then yeah. There is a chance Erden comes back into the meta, so look out for that. Uh, Irish Companions provision change from 10 to 9. Um, okay. Uh, Ivo, uh, ability to change the order of melee damage in a unit by 2, cooldown 2, reduce the cooldown by 1 whenever you play a Witcher. Um, I mean... Okay, so... It used to be it had like one charge and it did two damage and then every time you played a Witcher you got a charge. So this is an engine that keeps getting value. Uh, if you don't play Witchers, it's just a little slower. I feel like this is actually a nerf. Am I missing something? This looks like a nerf. Um, I guess they wanted to nerf removal because it's scary if Ivo can just do four damage. Um, it seems like a nerf. Uh, one of the core concepts for this patch is they want damage to be harder to come by on when when it's attached to body. So uh, another card that we'll get to right here, uh, we're, we're noting it. We're noticing a very similar uh, pattern in that uh, CDPR doesn't want large chunks of damage attached uh, attached to units. So uh, Ivo looks like a nerf. The card wasn't really played much, so it's not a huge deal. But uh, yeah, it was nerfed. Uh, okay, okay. Look at that, Johnny. Ability to change to whenever you play special card damage a random enemy by two. Um, so this card saw basically no play. Now it randomly pings units, so it's like super bad. Uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, Sarah is also a boost of random ally. Um, this one doesn't matter as much just because it's a boost. But Johnny not being able to kill the engines that you want to kill is significant. So this this is a massive nerf. Um. But it's to a card that's on no play, so not a not a huge deal. Uh, Lady of the Lake power change from four to five. Um, maybe it's good enough to be played in like a Northern Realms deck where you want to play lots of shields. Perhaps it's really the only deck I've seen with this card. Um, I don't know. I, I was gonna typically putting shields on engines is good if there's lots of removal, but if removal is getting nerfed, then. Okay, so the way I see this card seeing play is if everyone starts teching in, like, Alzer's Thunder to kill, like, your five or four point engines. So you play Lady of the Lake first, and you give it a shield so that Thunder can no longer kill it. Um, otherwise, outside of maybe a very specific shield in our deck, I don't know why you would play Lady of the Lake, because it just doesn't really do much. Uh, Land of a Thousand Fables, so this is a tutor card. Uh, provisions brought down, so it looks like... For the most part, we have ADC, Marching Orders, and a few other tutors in the game, all getting buffed by one provision, which is nice. Once again, if you want to add that consistency to your deck, uh, you're not punished by as much. Uh, Mahakamea, uh, provision change from 4 to 5. Um, this one's a little surprising. So, this card's 5 provision. This is just a 5 for 5. And you can unlock an engine. So, uh, if removal is getting nerfed, locks become a little better, right? Uh, and if locks are becoming better, then unlocks are also better. So, if you're having issues with lots of locks, maybe Usurper, like Super Lock, becomes a meta deck or something. Uh, maybe people really, really enjoy playing something like that because NR is so dominant. Um, you start playing uh, Mahakameo because it does what you need to do. Uh, it, it boosts the engine, which puts it out of, like, ram it... Uh, damage from cards like Serret, uh, but also it unlocks it, so that's pretty good. Um, 
maybe you throw like a one of tech of this into a random deck uh, for Northern Realms, but uh, like you're not going to see this in every deck. In, mo in most cases, Swallow is probably just going to be better. Uh, but for the rare instance of NR that does need more unlocks, uh, you run this. Provision change? No, it's sorry, not provision, it's strength. The boosting is changed from four to five, I would assume. Um, sorry. Uh, marching orders we talked about a little earlier. It's the low end of uh, Alistair's Double Cross. Uh, if you want the consistency, it's a little cheaper, which is nice. I'm glad CDPR is moving uh, in this line. Merc to Brock, ability to change to deploy damage to enemy units by two. So, in most cases, this is a nerf. Uh, this is similar to Ivo. It's basically lowering the uh, amount of burst removal that you can do. Uh, so, this is a very... This is definitely a nerf for, like, Northern Realms. Uh, they would play, like, Ike of Denzel, Merc to Brock, and maybe uh, the Dragon that pings for five. Um... I like this change a lot because I can play this card now. Uh, order cards are shit outside of full test. But in Squiatel, Squiatel loves to play cards. This is a deploy card and it's a dragon. Uh, I can finally play XD in my uh, Squiatel list because I can play Merc de Brock and a Moon Dragon. Uh, and I'm, if I'm feeling excited, maybe I'll throw in a Bork. Uh, but yeah, I could actually play some Squiatel uh, dragon decks. So I'm looking forward to playing this card because it's actually playable now. Um, Squiatel loves doing damage. Damage is really good. So... I like this change personally because I'm a Squiatel player. Uh, for Northern Realms players, uh, it is a nerf. But they got enough buffs that I don't think they're going to care too much about this one. Uh, Red Haze provision change from 6 to 5. Uh, this is the card that uh, you target a unit and it hits It's one of the adjacent. I, I think it's, I don't know if it's left or right. But it hits a unit next to it. Um, that's okay. It could be okay with Kira if Kira is really popular. Um, I would rather just play, like, Gigni or Urdin, but I, I suppose you could play Red Haze. I don't think this card will see much play. Like, unless Kira is the entire meta, and then sure, I, I, I suppose. But otherwise, I, I don't think it'll see too much play. Uh, Regis Bloodlust added melee restriction to ability. Okay. Renew provision 13 to 14. Ah, they're nerfing Renew. Okay. Um, sure. So, it seems like CDPR doesn't like it when you play a win condition and then you play it again playing your win condition two times uh yeah sure maybe they should have just added doom to siggy that would have worked too uh royal decree provision change from 11 to 10 so more thinning uh or consistency is being uh reduced in provisions which is nice sandstorm provision change from six to five. Ah, uh, okay so sandstorm pings far left far right by three this is a six for five if you can hit it. Um, I might play this card actually. Six to five is, yeah, I actually might play this. Um, in a heavy or like, uh, the thing is, even in a sheer deck, the, the biggest issue with this card is your opponent determines whether or not it gets value. Uh, yeah, you could play Bruver, like Dragoons, but for the most part. Uh, it is usually up to your opponent whether or not this card is good. Um, yeah, it does kill Milva. So if your opponent plays Milva, you can pop it. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, and you can't... And somebody in chat just mentioned you can kill engines. So if, uh, a little sneak peek for what's to come. Northern Realms Arbalisk got reduced to uh, four provisions for some reason. Um, so now you can portal Arbalisk. Uh, that's kind of scary. But, uh, yeah, you can Sandstorm and kill both of them, so that's kind of neat. Um, this is assuming they have no board, but typically you would want to be playing them uh, early on on no board. But, uh, yeah, maybe Sandstorm sees a tiny bit of play if people start running uh, Portal and a lot of three-strength uh, minions that come out. Uh, but otherwise, or, or maybe Milva is super-duper popular. But even then, if Milva becomes popular, people will just play two units and then wait. Or, like... I mean, worst case scenario with this card, people play like Justice, they get the two five point doors with shields, and then they put every single unit in between them, and you never get any value. Sarah, uh, random boosting. It's worse, but it sucks before, so it's not a big deal. Swallow, uh, provisions change from six to five. I think this card will pop up every now and then. Six for five is really good. Um, it's our first case of a six for five that's neutral. So, uh, uh, other than golden froth but this one's a little easier to pull off obviously this does walk into tall removal does walk into reset so that is obviously an issue um that is the downside but uh yeah we'll see if people are playing those uh last wish provision change from nine to eight uh yeah card still sucks abaya provision change from seven to six 
Uh, so we're, we're getting into that. That's all the neutrals. We're getting to monsters. Abaya, provis provisions changed from seven to six. Uh, okay, sure. It doesn't really do much. Uh, Brusha, power change from two to three. This is the card that pings for two damage. If it gets the death blow or kills the unit, uh, it gets thrive. So now it's a five for four w with potential thrive. Is that good? I mean, that's kind of like a drowner for 1p cheaper um granted you don't get the movement and you don't get the guarantee uh thrive but uh yeah i mean this card i actually saw people play from time to time it's like a slightly better um wolf pack but now that it's gone up in power and it's a five for four guaranteed with the potential of thrive yeah i i think people might play this um if you're looking for a 4p card and you can't find anything you just throw this in because it's good enough it's a five for four uh getting death blow isn't too hard i mean you play wyverns you can typically set it up um yeah I, I think people will play this why not it's like a wyvern except it might not get the thrive so yeah i i, I think this card's actually pretty good now solano harpy provision change from six to five so this is a buff to any deck that likes to eat stuff so like every aq slash uh, Deathwish deck, maybe, maybe, maybe Deathwish is good enough. I mean, we have Solano Harpy buff, we have a Bio buff. Granted, I still don't think this makes a cut, but um, yeah, Solano Harpy is now a five for five. And if you're playing AQ, you get plus one because of uh, the AQ drone that gets spawned from your leader. Uh, and yeah, it's just a better card in Deathwish. Uh, typically in Deathwish, one of the issues you run into is you don't have enough ways to like consume all your Deathwish cards. Uh, and the death wish consume cards are typically overpriced uh, and that's no longer the case so solano harpy being five is actually playable uh, i don't know if you run this in aq but you could it's really not that bad in aq it's a six for five which not terrible uh cockatrice power change from two to four ability change to deploy damage an enemy by one for each adjacent beast uh so no longer reach one I'm assuming this card is for provisions, I believe. I haven't played this card in a while. <laughs> I've played it in like a Phoenix uh, Beast deck back in the day. Um, still seems kind of bad. Two beasts, it's a six for four. No beast is a four. The question is how many beasts are you running in a deck? Can you consistently be getting two damage? Eh. It's okay. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe a full beast deck pops up, but it's unlikely. It's all right. I don't love it. Doing two damage isn't huge. If this was like two strength, do two damage for every adjacent beast or something, and like you could kill engine, that would be a little more significant. Doing up to two damage is not a huge deal. Uh, you're not really killing anything with two. I suppose it sets up uh, this card, but yeah, it, it, it might see some play. Cyclops, provision change from 6 to 5, removed reach, and added melee row restriction. Uh, so if you are playing Cyclops and you do want to chuck your stuff, you have to make sure to play it on the melee row. Because if you play it on your ranged row and you play Cyclops next to it, nothing happens. So uh, yeah, keep that in, <laughs> in mind. Um, yeah, so nice little buff for Cyclops. Uh, just keep in mind everything needs to go melee if you're planning on throwing it. Um, yeah. It's a Solano Harpy, but you get to chuck the stuff instead of consuming it. Uh, it's auto-include in Deathwish. Ooh, it's a different yeah, not a bad card. Uh, Kakado with the 15 ones. Thank you so much, man. Uh, runestones. So, for those of you who don't know, big change! Uh, all runestones are now five provisions. Yay! Um, uh... The only significance with runestones going from six provisions to five provisions is uh, Dana. So Dana is the only deck in the entire game that would actually want to play runestones other than maybe, uh, what's it called? Assimilate Nilfgaard. So I, I guess Assimilate Nilfgaard, this is a buff too. But um, yeah, it's okay in Dana. Five, um, there's a good amount of bronzes that you can be hitting uh, if you're playing poison. Hitting a poison card, an additional poison card, isn't terrible. Uh, yeah. Runestone is pretty good in Dana now at 5. Uh, I, I do think it'll see some play. Every now and then you'll roll like a smuggler or something. Uh, so yeah. Maybe you start seeing runestones in Squirtle. I, I would not be surprised. Mm. 
maybe so monsters where is it yeah i don't know maybe you run runestone for five provisions and try to high roll ice giants with it uh, possibly possibly we'll see uh flatter power change from three to four flatter is i believe the three that consumes a unit and then gets what i don't know three or four vitality um and it's five provisions so in aq this is what it's a f it guarantee starts at five so it's a six for five ah, it's actually pretty good in uh aq if you have a one on the board flutter is like a like a mini whatever it's called griffin yeah i i, I could see flutter seeing some play in aq outside of aq probably won't see too much play other than perhaps gurney um sure you could play it in gurney it's the same as it was before. You could play it in AQ and Gurney. Uh, it's a little better in AQ now. Um, might actually be good enough to make the list. We'll see. Uh, Gael, power change from 3 to 4. This is the card that I think it does 1 damage. Death blow boosts yourself by the base strength of the unit you killed. I think. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I don't think this does anything. The card saw 0 play. Now it'll see, yeah, probably no play. I don't think this does enough. Uh, I I feel like the damage needs to be increased, not the power of the unit. Goliath, oh, this is a big change. Provision change from 10 to 8. So Goliath is a 10 strength unit. Um, for 8, that's pretty good. If you have last say, this is a 10 for 8. Unconditional. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, if people aren't playing a lot of tall removal, it's just a 10 for 8, and that's good. Like, that's really good. Um, big monster decks loves this card. Uh, I, I was actually playing this for a period of time. I was playing a big monster deck and I literally just threw anything that was over six strength in the deck. It actually worked because people weren't playing removal and you're just smashing big boys everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I think this card will see a little bit of play, uh, in like really large gurney lists. Um, will it see play in the average monster deck? It could. I mean, if nobody is running tall removal, sure. Uh, the question is how many people are running tall removal. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, Hideous Feast, provision change from 6 to 5. This is the card that does 3 damage and boosts one of your units by 3. So it's a little better now. It's a 6 for 5. It has removal. Uh, you will probably auto include this in any debt laugh deck, but you're probably not playing debt laugh. So, yeah. Um... I don't know. It's okay. Uh, if people are playing a lot of five-point engines, you can Hideous Feast and then follow it up with, like, two damage from this card or, like, a Wyvern, I suppose. Eh, it's okay. Um, if monsters are just looking for raw value, then it's good enough. Uh, six for five, or, yeah, six for five is good enough. Uh, Swallow is now six for five, but this is typically better because you don't go too tall in a unit, uh, and it has removal attached to it. So, yeah, uh, if monsters is just looking for the game plan of putting points on the board... Hideous Feast will see some play. Speaking of putting points on the board, Ice Giant. Uh, this card is 7 strength, and it's 7 provisions now. It's a 7 for 7. So it's like a s bad swallow, except it doesn't walk into tall removal. Um, yeah, this card's going to see play. Because it walks around tall removal, and it's just a nice, proactive, giant body. It's a 7 for 7. Why not? I'm going to play this. Uh... The only reason you don't play this is if you're playing like a lopsided deck and you have a lot of very expensive cards and a lot of very cheap cards and this doesn't really fit the cut. Um, but if you're playing any kind of like gurney list, you're definitely going to play this card because 7 for 7 is great and it procs all your thrive and that's fantastic. Uh, Imworth provision change from 9 to 8, remove reach and added melee row restriction. Um, what does Imworth do? <laughs> I'm thinking of endless wrath with like pigs a unit, but I'm blanking out on what this does. Oh, Sabbath. Okay, sorry. So Sabbath provision change from nine to eight. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, Jotun power change from one to three. This is the card that gets plus what two for every unit your opponent has more than you. Um. It's a meme card. It's kind of fun. It's not very good. It can be very good if your opponent goes very wide. Uh, yeah. Um, 
maybe there's a no unit monster deck that plays this card other than like a no unit deck you're probably not going to play this morvid power change from five to six morvid's really good in the beast decks beast decks are not very good so yeah more entire provision change from 10 to 9. What does this card do, chat? Oh, it's Pop-Tart, right. Uh, this is a card that consumes your graveyard. Uh, yeah, this card sucks. Um, it's going to go from seeing no play to no play. Plumard, power change from 3 to 4. Wow. Uh, Plumard is a unit that gives bleed to two units, or to a unit twice. This is actually pretty big. This is now a 6 for 4. Wow. We just broke the five for fours. We're at six for four now. Um, and eight for four if you have both. This card's really good. Like, oh my goodness. Six for four is... This is the new, like, OP. Uh, yeah, this is auto-include in every deck because six for four is... Well, there's another monster card or a neutral that does that. So you're going to play this card. It's a good card. Six for four. Um... And removing a plumber is going to be very hard. So if you have two of these, you're going to get six for four and then eight for four. Is that good? Yes, that is very good. Queen of the Night, provisions change from eight to seven. Um, this is the card that gives, what, bleed four. It's like a five-point body. It's like a nine, so it's like a nine for seven. And it has, uh, you can purify a unit. That's kind of cute. Um, yeah, Queen of the Night is an okay tech now. Um, I think people will play it from time to time. Yeah, it's not bad. I think I'll play this. Why not? Uh, the downside of this is if you give something bleed and they consume it. So if you're playing against monsters, probably don't give a unit like whatever for bleed. Um, yeah. Other than that, not bad. Uh, she troll. Provision change from 10 to 9. Uh, this card sucks and this card still sucks. Siren. I mean, it, it's okay. This card is good if people are playing zero removal. Like you play this card... Or, like, I've played a deck where I Karanthir this, and then I play another one, and then I fill up my entire board, and then I play Glusty, and they go to, like, 30. Great. Uh, it's, like, a super-duper win-more card. Um, great card if nobody running any form of removal, uh, which is never going to be the case, so this card sucks. Uh, Siren Provision Change from 5 to 4. This is a 3 that deals 2, I believe, and then the 2 does or becomes Drain if you're under Moonlight. So it's now a five for four, potentially seven for four if you have Moonlight. Problem is, it doesn't look like they buff Crimson Curse, the cards. So yeah, Crimson Curse still sucks, which means Deathwish, Siren. Oh, am I thinking of a different card? Oh, I'm thinking of a different card. I'm thinking of um, the other card. That's not this card. Uh, Siren, provision change from five to four. Yeah, the the other one. Alp Vampire. Sorry. My bad. I apologize. Bloopers. Uh it boosts the Death Wish unit. What are the stats on this unit? It's what? Uh mm, I don't know. It's a what what is it? It's a three boost three. Okay, so it's a six for four if you're playing Death Wish. Okay. I mean we just saw like a six for four appear with no condition. I mean, if you're playing Deathwish, I guess it's okay. But even Deathwish decks never played Siren. I don't know. I mean, eh, how good will Deathwish be? We'll see, I guess. Uh, you have to be playing a lot of Deathwish for Siren to be worth it. But I suppose if you're playing enough, eh, I don't know. I don't think it'll see much play, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, Toad Prince provision change from nine to eight. Okay. I mean, you look at this card and you look at the new spheres and you wonder why this card isn't seven provisions. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a buff. It's good against uh, Queen Ada Lolo. Um, if you need more removal and people are running lots of threes, I suppose it's okay. Uh, a lot of threes went to four, so Toad Prince going off is going to be much harder. So I don't think this card will see much play. We'll see. Uh, Round Warrior. This is a... Big change. Uh, Run Warrior Power went from 3 to 4. This card typically only sees play in a Glusty AQ deck, and you Summoning Circle the Run Warrior, and then on the same turn, you play Glusty. Um, we're reaching the level where you can play this naked, wait a turn, and then go ham with it uh, with something like a Glusty or a Forktail. Uh, you don't necessarily need to cheat this out with Circle. You can just play it because... 
4 HP is a lot. Uh, right, you're also typically playing, what's it called? Kikos in the deck. So you play the Kikos. If they don't remove the Kikos, you win the game. If they remove the Kikos, you play the Vron Warriors. If they remove the Vron Warriors too, it means you're playing against Ethne. Uh, and you're probably crying. But as long as you're not playing against Ethne, uh, the Vron Warriors are possibly going to stick. Uh, and if they do stick, they get a ton of value. If you play this and you have, I don't know, three units on the, three, three one drops on the board and you play a Vron, not a Vron, a Fork Tail. This Ron Warrior is getting minimum 7 value. If you kill any of your opponent's unit, that number is just going to increase. So, yeah. You should be very scared of this card. If this card gets played, you have to kill it. If you don't kill it, your board might disappear. So, uh, yeah. This is a scary change. Uh, maybe, like, engine monsters will become a thing now. Who knows? Uh, Wispus Tribute provision change from 98. So, it, it looks like... Um, all tutors are getting reduced by one cost, uh, so I would assume this also applies to all the other faction tutors. So, uh, yeah, that's nice. Wild Hunt Navigator, power change from 2 to 3. Who? What? Uh, it's like 4P if you have dominance, boost a unit by 3 or something? I don't know. Uh, I think that's what it is. And if you don't... It's boosted by one, so it's, it has a potential of six if you have dominance, or it's a floor of four. Um, so, like, the way I see it, Plum Art is always better. It's, like, unconditional six for four with higher potential if you have both. Wild Hunt Navigator. So, the reason you run Wild Hunt Navigator is you're already playing a very tall deck. So, uh, the negative effect never goes off. But on top of that, you're already playing these other fours that are strictly better. So, like... You never put this in before the Plum Art. You always put it in after if you're looking for more low-P cards. Um, and there are actually enough low 4-P cards. I mean, we have another one right here. Uh, you... Okay, you're not going to be playing Siren. But... Uh, and, eh, probably not Ron Warrior either. But there's enough low, good 4-P cards and monsters now that you can probably do like a really lopsided deck where a lot of high provision cards... Yeah, you can put in goalie out now. Um, a bunch of fours, and then you can probably put in that mid range too with uh, like ice giant. So, uh, Gurney actually getting a lot of buffs in this uh, patch. So we'll see. Uh, I I think Gurney will actually be pretty good. Uh, Wyvern removed reach, added range, row restriction. Okay, Nag Flower provision change from ten to nine. I mean, this card was already really good. Now it's even better. Yeah. Good card. Uh, Skellige, the faction that caused this entire patch to happen. <laughs> uh, Skellige, okay. Ankrit Armorsmith provision changed from 5 to 4. Uh, what is this card? I always get these two mixed up. I think Blacksmith is the one that's... Every time you play a warrior, you get an extra charge and you get to boost a unit. Armorsmith is... I don't know. Karma, what does Armor Smith do? Check in game? Eh, I don't want to. Boost a warrior by three. Oh, it just has a one time deploy effect. How big is the body? It's three strength. So it's a six for four. Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, six for four is <laughs> very good. Uh,. Obviously, the downside of this card, I believe it has to boost a warrior. Uh, so if you're not playing any warriors, this card sucks. But, I mean, the idea would be play warriors forehead. Um, so if you're playing a warrior deck, a 6 for 4 is just good. So, yeah, you play this card if you're playing a warrior deck. If you're playing ice, it's probably auto-include. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, Blacksmith is, yeah, every time you play a warrior. So both of these cards are, it looks like they're pushing the war archetype a little bit. I mean, for the most part, uh, if you didn't get the gist of it, basically every engine in the game is getting plus one. Yeah. Yeah. So all three strength engines are basically four now. Um, so the real question is not if these are buffed, because they're obviously a buff. It's are they broken enough to see play an SK? I don't know. We'll see. Um, Ice doesn't see too much play other than Karma. So, who knows? Maybe Ice is good enough. And, I mean, they're, they're certainly getting some tools. They're definitely getting some uh, boosts. So, we'll see. 
Uh, I doubt it'll be better than the current versions of SK, but there will definitely be some people who go out and try it. Uh, Great Sword getting buffed from three to four. Okay. Uh, typically, if this card goes off, you lose. Uh, you play this in like a summoning circle deck with um, Iced. You, nah, it doesn't have to be Iced. It can be Iced or uh, Arnoff. Either way, uh, I've gotten blown out by this card. They get like 40 points, you just lose. So the difference between 40 and 41 is, well, one, but it doesn't matter. You're going to lose by 20 or 21. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah, very rarely do you ever play this card naked and just go back to your opponent and tell them to answer it. You're typically comboing it out with either uh, ice or summoning circle. So it's not a huge change uh, unless people start getting aggro enough where they just start dropping it at a four and just tell your opponent to answer it. Um, I guess side note, if you're playing rain, uh, it goes to six, which means it's out of muzzle range where typically it would be in muzzle range at five, right? Three to five. So I, I guess that's important, I suppose. Um, yeah, it it's probably not a huge change, uh, unless people do start getting greedy and nobody's running tall removal, uh, long ship provision change from seven, uh, six to five added range restriction. Uh, so this card is row lock now. If you have a Dragoon, uh, you can bump it to the melee row. Isn't this card four strength? It's a five for four every time your opponent plays a card. Isn't it? Like, is it one or two damage? I feel like it's... Oh, I don't remember. Is it one or two damage, chat? It's one. Okay. Um, I mean, it breaks even when your opponent plays a card. Uh, this is a very good card if nobody is playing movement. If nobody is playing movement... Um, yeah, it's just lots of damage. Uh, you could set two of these up and then play a great sword, and yeah, tons of value. Um, we'll see. Uh, Dragoons are still going to be staple in Squiatel, so if you queue into Squiatel, this card's just going to get moved. So, we'll see. Um, maybe it's good enough that a pirate slash ship SK deck is good. Um, probably not going to be the case. Because the other SK deck uh, is just too good uh, for that deck to see play. I mean, people will try it. I just don't think it's going to be better. Uh, and typically, people just play the best version of SK. So, you might see a little bit of it. We'll see. Um, it definitely is a... Well, I, I actually could argue that this is a nerf. Um, granted, my opinion is slightly biased because I, I mostly play Scoia'tael. And because of that, I always have Dragoons. Which means... Before, I couldn't deal with the long ship. I had to kill it, whereas now I just have to move it. Uh, and SK doesn't really have any cards that you normally need to move. So against Scoia'tael, this is actually a nerf. Against any deck that's not Scoia'tael, this is typically a buff. Um, this card does pop up from time to time, so it'll pop up a little more. Yeah. Um, this is the type of card where if you get two of these in round three and your opponent can't deal with it, you win. Right? That's two damage to every unit your opponent plays for the rest of the game. It's like a Ragnarok on both rows. That's pretty good. Um, shit, people might start playing like Freya and Necromancy. We'll see. Um, yeah, this card actually might be scary enough <laughs> that people start playing it. I will definitely probably try this card tomorrow. Uh, on Crate Marauder. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, feels good, man. Um, power change from two to three, damage change from four to three. Finally. Um, so as they've said, they want bronzes not to be doing four damage anymore, and now on Crate Marauder can only do a maximum of three damage. Finally, uh, you can now play your four point engine, and it won't die. Uh, that's great. Still kills Milva, but yeah, okay, whatever. There's lower chance if you're playing Roach and you're playing Milva. The odds of them killing Milva are very low. If they kill Milva, you have my permission to punch your monitor. Um, if you have a roach on the board with it. Yeah. Um, it is, you, you could argue it's a slight buff um, just because going from two to three means that all cards that had death blow two can no longer kill the Marauder. That's that's a bit of a downside, but I, I think the upside uh, kind of outweighs it. Uh, Borkvark Archer, power change from three to four. Okay. Um, card saw no play. I don't know. Maybe a damaging Crocless? I, I don't think so. We'll see. Uh, probably not going to see much play. Uh, Borkvark Hunter, power change from 3 to 4. 
Is this the only discard buff that we got? It's really good in a discard deck. Like, it was good before. The problem was it would get killed. So now it's less likely to get killed, which makes it a better card. But if discard package didn't get buffed, then I don't think this is enough to push discard back into the deck. Um, yeah, so is it a buff? Yep. Is it good enough for SK discard to become better than, like, Schwalblood or Dagger Herald or Arnoff or literally any other SK leader? Probably not. Uh, corrupted flamingo power change from four to five. That's kind of scary. Killing a five is much harder than killing a four. Uh, yes, muzzle is obviously an option, but uh, what's the P cost on this? I think it's like six. So if you boost, if you heal two units, which is not very hard to do because you're playing SK and you play priests um, or your your butchers. Oh, wrong card. Oh, this is the corrupted one. Sorry, you're right, chat. This is, this is why we have Twitch chat. Thank you, Twitch chat. Um, this is the card that hits the beast and, like, bleeds. A, this card sucks. Um, yeah, don't play this card. Uh, no. Uh, Delirium provision change from 7 to 6. I have no idea what this card is. Chat, what is this card? I don't know what this is. Oh, it's the whale. Yes, yes. Okay, the whale. Um, right, right, right. I keep... They keep... Yeah, it used to come off of uh, Madam Lugos or whatever. Um, Madman, not Madam. <laughs> uh, Delirium. So it's the six random pings, the, the whale, spectral whale card. Um, yeah, this is a buff. It's pretty good in great swords. Uh, you can actually just play this as a six because... If your opponent plays a five strength unit, like a, let's say they play a botchling and they move boost it to six at the beginning of a round, you just play this and you remove it. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Um, I think this card will see play. You play Milva Roach, you play this card, gone. No RNG. It just kills it. All right. There's no baby raging if there's no RNG. Right. So, um,. Yeah, I could see this seeing some play uh, if SK wants uh, a little bit more of a control package. Uh, if SK just wants to point slam and play priests and stuff, uh, you probably don't play this. But uh, I, I could actually see this seeing some play in some SK lists. It's good enough. Uh, I would probably, I would definitely play this card in Squayatel. Um, granted, the game plan of Squayatel and SK are slightly different. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I actually do think this card will see some play. Uh, Demon Light Longship added range restriction. Light Longship finally got nerfed after Homecoming. Has it always been a 5 for 5 since Homecoming? I don't know. Um, so yeah, this card is range restricted. Finally. Oh my goodness. So when your opponent plays this on the range row and you play Dragoon, dead. Pog. Uh, that's really nice. Um, this card being uh, row restricted is super duper 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 important because for some reason CDPR thought it was a good idea to buff protectors from three to four. <laughs> um, so yeah, very important that light long ships are row locked because if they weren't, you just lose to protectors. So yeah, um, yeah, this is important because the idea is uh, they can set up that package with light longship and protectors, and you can uh, negate it with a simple movement. So, uh, Strays of Spalo might actually start seeing play. Uh, if you're noticing, a lot of cards in this uh, balance patch uh, are now row restricted, which means a simple movement card kind of denies the entire engine. So, cards like Strays of Spalo might actually be good enough to just play in decks because, well, other than Scryatel, they don't really have access to movement. So,. Yeah, you want to stop a light long ship instead of killing it or instead of trying to kill the protector, you just move it. So, yeah, Strays might actually start seeing some play. Uh, and there's another Squayatel card that got buffed, which also has movement attached to it, which we'll get to in a bit, which I'm also excited to play, but uh, we'll, we'll wait for that. Uh, Pirate, power change from 6 to 7. This is the card that discards the top card of your deck. Um, this card's, what, 5p, I think? Uh, this is a 7 for 5 now. Is the 7 for 5 good? Wait, no. Is this 6p or 5p? I think it's 5p. Um, 7 for 5 is a savagery, except no condition. 
Um, you don't need the death blow to granted you are discarding a random card So if you play this in round one and you discard like a Hjalmar Yeah, this card sucks um, so either a Just have good RNG B play Fisher King and put Morkfarg on the top easy 12 point tempo uh, or C just play it in round three um, Which is typically where this card is gonna see play in round three um, people do play it in round two, uh, if you're getting bled or you're bleeding, so it's not that bad in round two. It's typically, you just don't want to play it in round one. Um, so, yeah, uh, this card actually saw some play in, like, a mid-range SK list, and now it's better. So, yeah, probably play the card. Seven for five in round three, no condition, is really strong. Uh, it's like an Ice Giant, but 2P cheaper. Um, it doesn't walk into tall removal. Yeah, I see no reason not to play this. Uh, other than the fact that you can't play it in round one uh, and that is important the reason being um, A lot of the times the way you beat SK is as long as you win round one you can win round three uh, Which is why SK is typically push pretty hard now if they have a card like this in their hand that they don't want to play um, That makes it kind of awkward for SK to all in in round one so Either a don't run the card or B you just mulligan it and draw it later. So yeah, I, I do think this card will see some play um, Demon Warship, power change from 2 to 3, added range restriction. This is the card... Is this the card that pings for 3 damage, I think? I, I, I want to say that it's the, the 3 single pings. Um, so yeah, it's a 6 for 5 now. Which, if you had told me this like 3 months ago, I'd say this is absolutely broken. But, yeah, new patch where bronzes are better. So 6 for 5 is... I mean, it's good in a croc list. Uh, if you need more removal, worship is good. Um, right? You now are able to remove four strength units with uh, the help of your leader. So, yeah, I, I actually do think this card will see some play in croc. Definitely. Um, will it see play outside of croc? You have to remember. So, like, if, if the patch had, like, just this buff in it for SK... Like, you would start seeing this play. The problem is, like, everything got buffed. So, and, and because everything got buffed by, like, 1P, it doesn't necessarily, like, you don't necessarily lose one bronze and rotate in another bronze because if everything's getting buffed, then nothing's getting buffed, right? With that kind of mentality. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I definitely think it's a buff for Croc, no doubt. Being able to remove fours instead of threes with the uh, combination of Croc is, uh, is very significant, especially with uh, the... Uh, damage reduction on bronzes. So uh, I do think this card is auto included in croc outside of croc We'll see. Uh, I need to Keep the music going uh, Queen's guard provision change from seven to six uh, It's the four every time it takes damage you can make another one Yeah, I mean, okay. The problem is it doesn't break the game and SK likes breaking the game So if it's not breaking the game, why would you play it? I mean, it's a scary card, I guess. Wait. The way you proc this before was croc, right? Because croc is self-ping. Like, two months ago. Now it can't do that. How do you proc this? Oh, you just foul blood it. Oh, okay. Why didn't I think of that? No, this card sucks. Uh, Warmonger, power change from 4 to 5. Uh, this is the artifact removal card. If your opponent has a damage card. Herald? Yeah, but that's assuming it lives. If the Herald dies, then... It's just not... It's not consistent, chat. Like, if they play a Queen's Guard... It, like... It's an order, too. It's not even zeal. So, like, if they play Herald Houndsnout, and then it comes to you, you do whatever you want to do, and then they play a Queen's Guard, you go, Oh, look! There's a Queen's Guard! Kill the Houndsnout! Oh, look! It's dead. Combo, gone. Like, what are they going to do? Play a priest? Okay, they get one tick of Queen's Guard, and that's it. Or you just kill the Queen's Guard. Like, I don't know. Not that good. Anyway, Warmonger got buffed. Uh, looks like Artifact Removal is getting buffed. Um, I mean, it's a 5 for 5 now, right? Granted, <laughs> so 5 for 5, a long time ago, aka today and 
back from now other than not tomorrow uh, would be good enough. But five for five is no longer good enough because we now have seven for five. Um, five for five nowadays starting, well, tomorrow is super bad. Um, yeah, and this is an SK where SK cards are seven for five and priest and protector. So, um, yeah. You play this the same as if you played it before. If you need the artifact removal, you play the card. Uh, you probably actually won't play this. You'll probably play the neutral one uh, just because typically when people are playing artifacts, they're typically playing a bunch of artifacts early on. So you don't get that damage unit, which means you can't actually use this card. So yeah, you'll probably just run the neutral artifact removal instead since it also got buffed instead of this. But uh yeah, might see some play from time to time in Croc. Uh, Ermion, provisions change from 9 to 8. Yay, not going to see any play. Uh, Giant Boar, power change from 3 to 4. Not going to see any play. Gutting Slash, provisions change from 5 to 4. Uh, what does this card do? It's like deal 4 damage if they have 2 damage units. It's like deal 6, I think. I think that's what it does. Um... Okay, chat's telling me that that's correct. If that's the case, then yeah, it's a four that deals four. Um, as we just explained, we're now getting six for fours in SK and other factions as well. So like in a vacuum, four for four is obviously terrible, but you have to remember removal now is worth a lot more than just slamming stats on the board because removal allows you to well, remove engines on your opponent's side of the board. So in a croc list, you probably play this because four for four is, well, four for four damage is quite good. So uh, in a croc list, and, and every now and then you get to do six, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, I think this card will see play in uh, croc list because, yeah, you just get to remove more stuff. Um, every now and then it removes six, which is really good for four. Uh, yeah, I think this card will see play in croc list. Outside of croc list, um, like removal is nice, but... Unless it's attached to a gold card, SK typically doesn't want to play it because their bronzes are so good. So, unless they need... Unless, like, NR is rampant and just dominating the meta and SK is, like, freaking out and they just need more removal. Uh, right, and this is this is if you're playing, like, Foul Blood. But I feel like if that's the case, then you just stop playing Foul Blood and play Croc. Yes, I, I chat. I don't know why. I, I read chat ages ago. It's conditional six. I understand. Um, So, yeah, this will see play in Croc. Outside of Croc, probably won't see too much play. Uh, Heymund. I don't know what this card is. What is this card, chat? Chat, what is Heymund? I don't... New pirate failure. Oh, this is the... Yeah, okay. The new pirate dude who's, like, terrible. Yay, pirates still suck. Wee. Okay. Uh, Hemdall. Okay, I know what this card is. Uh, this is for Iced, the warrior. I mean, it was pretty bad before. I don't know. Like... This is the type of card where you have to play it on the board and, like, cross your fingers that your opponent has no removal. If they have no removal, you clap your hands together and you get tons of value. Um, or you pull it out with ice, but now that we have Wild Carl and Nut, you typically just want to do that instead. Uh, or, like, Yetta BDM. I don't know. There are typically just better cards. Unless people are playing no removal and you can just play it by itself and clap your hand when it doesn't get removed. Other than that exact case, um... Yeah, I, I doubt it. I, I, I think people are still going to be running removal. There's never been a meta where people don't run removal uh, because of uh, Kira. We'll, we'll get to in a bit. Uh, but Muzzle is actually pretty good against Kira. Uh, it's still going to be good against Syndicate. So, uh, yeah, this is a five. So you can muzzle it. Um, and it is a very good muzzle target at that. So, yeah, I don't know. Outside of a very particular ice deck that really loves Hemdall. Uh, yeah, I don't think this card will see much play. Uh, hey, May Flaminga. Uh, power change from 4 to 5, so same as the corrupted one up there. Uh, if you have two damage units, which is not very hard to do with Priest and Butcher, uh, on play, it's a 7 for 6, which, once again, right now, that's pretty good. 
it's okay, especially because it's an engine that keeps getting value. Uh, will it be good enough with all these changes? We'll see. Uh, five is a lot of HP. It's it's hard to kill fives. Um, if you're running enough engines, I mean, you're playing Priest. Priest is an engine. Um, Hound Snout is kind of an engine. I don't know. Maybe it'll see some play. Probably won't just because it's not breaking the game. But uh, I don't know. Maybe there's an ice list that just plays like all like like not uh, this one, but plays a bunch of engines uh, and maybe this card sticks, in which case it's pretty good. So we'll see. Maybe there's a full like super heavy engine deck for SK, which makes this card see play. Um, otherwise, it's not breaking the game. So probably won't see too much play in SK. Uh, hey, May Herbalist, this is a card that heals a unit. Uh, boost three and heal three instead of two and two. Um, that's kind of cute. I don't know what the stats are on this card. Uh, is this, I don't know, chat, how many provisions and how many base strength is this? It's two and, is it two and, two for five? Okay, so you get to, yeah, okay, it doesn't break the game, it's a shitty SK card, it's not gonna see play, it's not better than the current SK card. Maybe you play it in an ice deck to heal, like, veterans, uh, the Tarasek vets, uh, outside of that, um, probably won't see much play. Uh, hey, May Protector. Power change from three to four. Uh, so many of these SK cards, I don't even know what they are. Cause nobody plays them because the other SK bronzes are just so broken. Um, uh, chat, what's the card? I don't know. I, I, I know what it looks like. It's the card that pings damage. Why are you guys question marking? Everyone plays Protector. Oh, oh, sorry. I was thinking a different card. Yeah, it's Protector. We talked about this card earlier. All right, question marks are actually... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was thinking this card right here. Spear Maiden. Protector. I do know what this card is. Uh, this is the nutty card that's very good with uh, any Foul Blood slash uh, Light Longship deck. This is why I was talking about the importance of Light Longship being Rowlocked. Because now you can stop a Light Longship Protector uh, combo simply by moving uh, the Light Longship. Yeah, I'm a little worried about them nerfing or buffing Protector from 3 to 4. The card was already very, very good. Typically, you'd play this in Svalblood. Blood. You would use your Svalblood Blood ticks, like three of them on Wild Carl, and this card would start at 6, and you wouldn't be able to remove it. Uh, and then it would just keep getting value from Priest. Now, it's bigger. Yeah. Uh, if you play it next to a Light Longship, it starts at 5. Yeah, um, this card's scary. I mean, it was scary before, and now it's scarier. Uh, you better be running movement, otherwise this card's just gonna smash you, because this card is very good now. Scout, power change from 3 to 4. Why? Okay, well, Scout is better. Sure. Uh, card was auto-include. Still auto include. Spear Maiden, power change from four to five. Uh, this is a card that I didn't know. It, this card's been changed so many times. Uh, it's like do two damage and then do two damage to itself. Nobody plays Scald. Some people play Scald. No? Everyone plays Scald and Croc. Scald is the discard card? Oh! Oh. Okay. Okay, I don't actually know. Jeez, I need to play SK. You, I Okay, last season, I played a whopping... I mean, I could open it up and show you. I played like 16 games of SK, all right? In the last two months, I've played like 40 games of SK, all right? Yes, actually, Papiga, you're right. Hey, May Scout, discards a unit. Um, I don't know. Is Brand good enough? It's probably not better than the current SK leaders. I need to play some SK. This, this is pretty bad. There's so many cards in SK that I don't know the names of anymore. Um, yeah, they're just reverting this. This used to be 4 strength, now it's 3. And then went back to 4. So, yeah, I mean, it's good in an SK discard deck. Is SK discard good? Eh, it's okay. Um, yeah, probably won't see too much play uh, outside of exactly discard. Spear Maiden. Uh, yeah, I think it does 2 damage. If it does 2 damage, it's pretty bad. Because other SK bronzes are better. Yeah. 
Uh, Madman Lugos, provision change from 9 to 8, melee restriction added. Uh, if you're playing Scoia'tael, this is good. It means you get to move it and deny it. Um, they keep buffing... Nope, this is a different card. <laughs> this is the card that pings damage, right? Yeah, this is not the engine. Oh my goodness, I need to play some SK. This is a deploy card. Um, yeah, it's slightly better in Arnoff. Hey, chat, I actually caught this one, all right? Calm down. Uh, it does two damage every time you have a damage unit. It's it's okay in a Arnoff list. Outside of Arnoff, it doesn't see much play. Some people play it in Croc, but it's not that good. I don't know. Uh, it's probably not good enough to make the cut. Mardro. Heals a unit. Whatever. You're not going to play Mardro. Raging Bear. Power change from 6 to 7. Okay. That's a nice um, SK Beast buff. Um, this along with, I think it's Elder Bear above got chains for plus one strength um yeah beast sk got a little bit of a buff granted beast sk is really bad against tall removal slash uh resets like urden like if you q beast sk against urden you auto lose um the problem is uh we're walking into a meta with northern realms and Boost is actually going to be something that's pretty scary, so people might actually start running Erdin. If that's the case, this card's not very good. Um, we'll see. Uh, Savage Bear. Power change from 2 to 4, provisions 5 to 4, damage 2 to 1. So the damage 2 to 1 is pretty big. Uh, typically, you'd play this in a Beast SK deck. Sometimes you'd Operator it, uh, and you could ping for 6 damage. Now you can't do that. Uh, this is a huge nerf. Uh, this card didn't see much play. Now it's definitely not going to see play. Um, yeah, not, not great anymore. Not that it was that great before. I don't even know if this is, I mean, it'll probably make the cut for Beast SK just because it has the word Beast on it. But, uh, yeah. So the reason they did this once again is they want to remove, uh, high amounts of damage on bronzes because, yeah, doing six damage is a lot if they're nerfing all bronzes to doing three or less. Sig Vault added melee row restriction. I don't know what this card is. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. What does this card do, chat? It's the engine? Thanks. That's very helpful. Which pings for one. Oh, is it the five-point engine that if it has... If it's damaged down to two, it pings for two instead? Yeah, it's a berserk one. Um... Uh, I guess it's worse against Squiatel. Scal power change from 3 to 5 damage from 4 to 3. Ooh. They nerfed this. Okay. Uh, that's a pretty big nerf. That's a really big nerf. Not being able to do 4 damage means you can't kill any engines. Um, outside of it, exactly a croc list is probably season of play. Just because... Yeah, not being able to do 4 damage means you can't kill a lot of things. Uh, I don't think this card will see... Ah! It'll see play in croc because it has the word removal on it. Uh, outside of croc... It's still an 8 for 8? Eight. Yeah, but 8 for 8 isn't good enough anymore. 8 for 8? Especially in SK? <laughs> nope. 8 for 8 isn't good enough anymore. Um, yeah, you'll play this in Croc. Outside of Croc, probably won't see much play. And this is a card that used to basically be auto-include. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe SK is having a really hard time and they just can't find cards to break even. And they run... Yeah, that's not going to happen. Runestone, nerf, or buffed, but doesn't matter. It's not good enough. Uh, Tide Cloak Hideaway. What? What is this card? Uh, oh, is this one of the new... It's like a pirate card, isn't it? I don't know what this card is. It's a syndicate ship, right? Why is it called Hideaway? Whatever. Uh, this card is a ship card. Nobody plays it because pirate ships suck. So, yeah, this card still sucks. Don't play this card. Uh, Tursec Axeman. Still sucks. Tursec Veteran. 4 to 3. The damage it deals to itself. So it starts at a 5. Um, so it's a 5 for 5 on play. I mean, okay. If you're playing Heime Flamingo. Fl I'm just going to call it Flamingo. Then I suppose it's okay. It's harder to kill. It works well with the, the heal card that got buffed, but... 
outside of exactly an ice deck, it's probably not worth it. So, yeah, still probably not good enough. But we'll see. Maybe they'll see some play in the ice. Ulfden added melee, rogue restriction. Okay. Northern Realms. Oh, boy. Uh, this is this is going to be a big one. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of changes for Northern Realms because they re... Oh, my. Okay. This is going to be a long one. All right. Northern Realms added a few things. New keyword, inspire. New keyword, crew. Resupply, siege engine, and warfare. Uh, they don't talk about them, so I think I know most of them. Inspired is now, if it's boosted, do X. Crew is, if it's next to, a J like, soldiers, I think. If it's next to two soldiers, it procs. Resupply is... Uh... Isn't it every time you play a warfare card, it, like, reprocs? Yeah, okay. Siege Engine is... It's a new category, so there are now cards called Siege Engines, and Warfare is uh, similar to Nature Cards in Shkoyatel. It's just Northern Realm special-specific cards. Uh, Mauler, power change from 3 to 4. Okay, I'm going to open these cards up in Gwent, because I need to do a direct... I need to do a comparison, because Northern Realms is another faction I do not play very much, so the comparison will be nice. Uh, Mauler... Power change from 3 to 4 provisions, 6 to 4 damage, 4 to 2. Uh, this card currently is 6 provisions, damage a unit by 4, reach 1, 3 strength. Um, problem with this card was it sucked. And yeah, it never survived and it had reach 1. Now that it doesn't have reach 1 because reach is no longer in the game. Uh, yeah, 3 to 4 provisions, 6 to 4, damage 4 to 2. So it's a 6 for 4. Is it Rolocked? I don't know if it's Melee Rolocked. It doesn't say it's Melee Rolocked, so I'm assuming it's not Melee Rolocked. Um, but it could possibly be. Mm, maybe. It might see some play. If Northern Realms is looking for a removal type of game and they want a proactive play, right? So, like, you can turn one play this and you get the damage uh, the, the following turn, which is kind of nice for cards like Vernon Roche, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's good enough. Um, there's, there's a lot of good Northern Realms cards now, so I don't know if it'll make the cut. Like, if, if we were talking about right now, before this patch, if this card was introduced, yes, this card would see play. Six for four for Northern Realms is quite good, with removal attached to it. Uh, but I don't know if this is good enough. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, this is the type of thing, it's very hard to evaluate the cards in Northern Realms, because they're changing so much, right? So, like, with SK, we have, like, a baseline. We can compare it to, like, existing SK decks and if the, the new buffed cards will, like, fill a slot in an existing SK deck. Northern Realms, right now, the only Northern Realms decks that exist are Hensel decks. Full tests with, uh, like, uh, multiple scouts and commandos when you play them. Uh, and then, like, a combo Kalanti slash uh, Hubert deck. Um, so this, yeah, I, I think it will see some play. Uh, is it good enough to see play in every Northern Realms deck? I have no idea. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, Anna, ability change to every ally turn on turn and boost a unit on the right by one inspired boost adjacent units by one. So this is our first instance of uh, the inspired keyword. So current Anna is whenever it's boosted, it's boosts adjacent units by one. Now it automatically boosts uh, the right unit by one. Uh, so that's kind of nice. If you play it and for some reason you're off a meat tick, uh, you can immediately get the plus one. Which is kind of cute. Um, so for the majority of the time, when you're boosting this unit, if it's boosted, it's going to be the same outcome. Boost two units by one. Uh, but every now and then your opponent will damage it. Uh, and for whatever reason, you can't use a Meave or maybe you have to use a Meave tick on something else. And you'll still get plus one. So strictly a buff. It is slightly better. Most of the times it's not going to matter. Um, if your opponent is Ardol and they steal it and you damage it, they keep getting boosts, so I guess it's a slight nerf against Ardol. Uh, if you want to go all the way, they could muzzle it, and then purify it, and then you damage it, and it still gets boosts. Yeah, okay. Um, but other than those instances, it is a buff. Alright, who's the add up? Power change from 3 to 4. Is this a typo? Cooldown 2 to 1? Are you serious? 
Whoa, okay, um, yeah. This card was already pretty good. It not only went up in power, but cooldown 2 to 1 is huge. Um, yeah, so typically when you play this, it has zeal, so you immediately get the charge plus 1. But you usually had a turn, right? You could not kill it, you had a turn to do something else, and then you'd have to remove it the following turn. Uh, you have to deal with it immediately, because otherwise it's just value. Um... There's a card, where is it? I don't, uh, I think it's, I don't know where it is, but a different, uh, Full Test Pride, I think. Uh, it's gonna love this card because, yeah, this is, a lot of the times, giving a unit a charge equals two damage, which means this is a four that gives a unit two damage, uh, or like two boost or whatever, um, every turn. Yeah, this is really good. Like, wow, um... Granted, this card is still range lock, I'm assuming. So, you better be running movement. Otherwise, you're just going to lose. Um, screw locks. Just play movement. I think I'm going to start running strays in my in my Squayatel decks. Because, yeah, uh, there's a lot of row, lock, row locked cards. And if they're left unchecked, you lose. So, yeah, I think we have to start playing a shit ton of movement because... Protectors are insane now, and add-ups are insane now. So, uh, yeah. Have fun adding uh, strays to every deck from now on. Uh, here's the problem. If Northern Realm starts adding strays too, then... Uh-oh. Ballista added Siege Engine category. Power change from 4 to 3. Provisions from 5 to 4. Ability change to deploy damage an enemy unit by 1. Order damage an enemy unit by 2. Okay. Uh, sure. Power change from 4 to... Okay, uh, yeah, so it's like a smaller, whatever it's called, uh, where is it? It's down here somewhere, the, the big boy. Uh, it, it's a smaller, ah, I forgot the name already. Whatever, it does two damage. Um, the fact that it has deploy do one damage is kind of nice. Uh, did they change, I'm assuming, did they change, um, demo event? I don't know. I don't know if they changed some of them. But uh, I, I do know uh, Ada got changed. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, maybe you can play this in a demo deck. It is a little better. Uh, power change from 4 to 3. Kind of sucks. It's more easily removed. Uh, but it is 4 provisions now. Which is actually pretty good. 4 provisions. You just play this. You're getting what? 4 value? Oh yeah, that's shit. Never mind. Uh, yeah, you probably won't play this unless you're playing a very heavy demo list. So like in a demo event deck, it's fine. Outside of a demo event deck, it probably won't see much play. Ban Art Tutor. Power change from 4 to 2. Provisions from 5 to 4. Ability change to deploy boost an allied mage by 4. Wow, so this card used to be, what, boost a unit by however many charges it has. Now it's... Oh wow, it's a 6 for 4. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Um. That's not bad. Uh. Yeah. Mage archetype might be a thing. So the problem with mage archetypes in the past was there wasn't enough mages. Uh. So we have the mage card. It's five provisions, four strength. Uh, ping a unit by one. The charge increases by every time you play a mage. Um. So the idea is if you can play enough mages, that card just goes nuts. Uh. You can use this to boost it to eight. Granted, that does play into. Oh, actually, it doesn't, right? Because XD and Geralt are 9 now. So, actually... So, the new 8 is fine. You can have 8s and be okay. Unless you're playing against Nilfgaard with Leo. So, yeah. You throw this on that engine and that engine doesn't die. I mean, it could get locked, but it won't die. Uh, unless you're playing against Nilfgaard Cleaver. Yeah, sure. So, Carlos can kill it. Sure. Uh, you just don't do it immediately. You wait, like, two turns. So... Yeah, maybe Mage Northern Realms is a thing. This card definitely helps that archetype. Um, outside of a Mage NR deck, yeah, this card sees no play, obviously. Um, is Mage Northern Realms going to be good enough? I have no idea. Battering Ram, added Siege Engine category ability change to order range move self to the melee row, then damage highest enemy unit by three. Crew gain zeal. Okay. Ooh. I don't think when Slima leaked this, I don't think it had this, did it? I don't think it did. Anyways, um, I would just, I guess it's still five provisions and four strength, because that's what it is right now. 
Um, it did? Okay. That's fine. Um, so it is important that it's damage highest enemy unit, which means you don't just get to hit three damage on an engine and try to kill an engine. Uh, you're just playing this kind of like a value card. Uh, I don't know if it can hit immune units. It just says damage highest enemy. So I would assume it can hit immune cards. Assuming the immune cards is the highest, right? So if you're playing opponent Squirtle and they play the immune dragon, uh, I would assume it would hit the immune card, right? Cool. Um, is this card good? I mean, if you can consistently get the crew off and you proc it, it's a seven for five, which is really good for Northern Realms. Um, the question is, is it still good enough after these new changes? The answer is, I have no idea. Uh, it is a very good value card. Granted, once again, if a lot of people are playing movement, because uh, movement is very good now, um, then perhaps this card isn't very good, right? Because if your opponent moves it to the melee row, you no longer get the effect. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. Granted, you do have a higher chance that your, uh, what's it called? Your adepts live, or don't get moved. So maybe this is a bait for like adept movement so we'll see we'll see um but yeah it, it looks like a very good value card uh black ryla power change from three to five provisions seven to eight ability to change to order melee damage a unit by one cooldown one inspired damage a unit by two instead so inspired is if this unit is uh boosted power change three to five provisions seven to eight i mean it's row locked right so it sucks <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Doesn't seem great. Um, yeah, not much to say about it other than maybe it's, yeah, I don't know. Probably won't see much play uh, unless nobody's running any damage and you can consistently keep that uh, unit boosted so that it's doing two damage a turn, but the odds of nobody running removal are slight, slight, uh, very slim. So yeah, I, I don't think this card will see much play. Bloody Baron, power chain, uh, power seven, provision ten, added category soldier ability, change to formation order, restore a unit to its base power. Inspired, if target was boosted, give it bleeding with duration equal to the amount of boost removed from it. I need to reread this. Uh. Oh, wow. Okay. Really? They're adding... Oh. Ooh. Okay. So, it's like a really powerful Peter. Like, really big Peter, rather. All right, so Peter, you pay three provisions for the ability. You pay three provisions for this ability, too. But it has a bonus ability in that... If you reset a boosted unit, which is typically going to be your opponent's cards, um, you give it bleeding. So, yeah, if you reset an Osrel, you get to bleed it for, like, 10, but it has 1 HP, so it just dies. But, you know, it plus 1 damage, which is kind of nice. Um, cool, same thing. I, what In what case is, is this bleed going to be good? I guess TA? Okay. If your opponent TAs a unit and you smack this on it, uh, that's bleed five. That's a lot of bleed. Uh, it's typically going to kill it. Uh, yeah, it's good on Bincy. That's true. It's good on, um, I, I suppose, uh, what's her name in Nilfgaard? <sighs> this is what happens. She's three, uh, Vivian, there we go. Vivian, it's okay on Vivian, the target that Vivian, granted, nobody really plays Vivian, but uh, if Vivian d start seeing play, then Bloody Baron's good against it. It's good against Sea Jackal. Yeah, this card's pretty good. Um, no, it is order, but you do have formation. So uh, if you're looking to just play this and potentially get the value later, you can just throw it on the range row for the plus one. Um, or you can throw it on the melee row and immediately get the effect. So yeah, this is actually a pretty powerful card. I like it. I, I do think this card will see play. Uh, it's very strong against TA. Uh, resets are fairly strong, and they're only going to get better because uh, Northern Realms has a lot of good boost cards like Kira. 
Uh, and this is a good counter to them. So, yeah, I do think this card will see play. Uh, resets, like Peter, if Peter was a, a neutral card, I think he would see a good chunk of play. Uh, it's very good against Priests, obviously. Yeah, it's just a good card. Uh, I think this card will see a lot of play. And it's a big body. Like, seven-point body is huge. If this was, like, eight provisions and, like, a five-point body or something or, like, a four-point body, maybe not. But this is just, like, a thick, thick body on the board. And thick bodies is something that Northern Realms doesn't have a lot of. Also, the fact that it's base seven means Kira is insane on this card. You just slap this on the back row, play another card, play Kira, and you're looking at, like, 20 value on Kira. Um which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, yeah, this card's really good. This card's going to see a lot of play. Very good card. Uh, Bloody Flail, uh, artifact changed to... It's a special now. Provision 6 category Warfare ability, which is a new Northern Realm-specific special uh, ability. Give an enemy unit bleeding for 8 turns for each allied soldier. Decrease bleeding duration by 1 and deal 1 damage. Uh, so we talked about this card a little bit the other day. The biggest issue with this card... So typically when you play removal... Um, you want to remove engines early on, right? If your opponent plays a botchling, you want to kill it. You don't want to wait five turns and play five soldiers and then kill it. Uh, cause then you just gave that card a ton of value. So if you're using this for removal, it's pretty bad because you need to have a sizable board before it actually starts one shotting engines. Um, you can play it later into the game, maybe after like Revenants have ticked off with Drog, uh, and then it's an 8 for 6, but at that point, you're just slamming a unit for 8 for 6, which is okay, but is that really worth it? Is that really your game plan for Northern Realms? Not really. Uh, so yeah, I don't think this card will see any play. The only reason you would play this card is if like you really want Warfare cards. If there are enough uh, resupply cards in your deck... Um, that proc off of warfare Then you could play this card, but unless exactly that condition is needed Then I don't think this card will see much play. It's just too underwhelming and what it does. It's just it, it takes too long for it to actually get the value that you want in most cases Alzer's thunder is just better uh, Centurion artificer provision changed from five to four Really? Oh Wow uh, I'm gonna double check on this but I'm pretty sure this is the card that gives shield with formation. Um, this card is pretty decent in any kind of deck that needs to protect an engine slash a shield deck. And we'll get to it, but there's a few uh, more cards that have shield that have been added to the uh, Northern Realms uh, pool of cards. So if you're playing a shield deck, you play this card because before it was auto include and now it's just better because it's cheaper. Shit, you could play Portal and rip two of these out, and you're actually not that sad because, oh, uh, okay. You don't get the, the bonus of uh, boosting them by one by playing them on the range row, but they're not terrible. It's two threes, and you get a uh, potential shield the next turn. Yeah, it's a good buff. It will see play. Oh, we thank you so much for this. I hope your stream went well. Appreciate it. Uh, Centurion Enchantress. Power went from three to four. Wow, okay. So, um... This card was basically auto-include because it was a 5 for 4. Now it's a 6 for 4. Yeah. Um, still play the card because it's still really good. Uh, patch is tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Auto-include. Auto-include. Uh, Royal Guard boost increase from 2 to 3. Oh, okay, it's this card. It's like the Reaver Hunters. Um, that's actually significant. I've played a little bit of this deck before um, in the past and just gone ha ham with it with, like, Hensel. It's kind of fun. The difference of two to three is actually significant um, because before I was getting up to, like, 12 or 14 with these guys, and they start at eight. So that's... I'm getting four. So it's, like, an extra four, three, seven... Ah, you're looking at like 11 plus value in like a heavy round where you're playing a bunch of these 11 like 10 plus uh, And that that's really good granted if people are playing Gigni or Scorch or Tall Removal or Bloody Baron or Erden or any form of Tall Removal or Reset uh, The deck's obviously not gonna be very good. Uh, it is a pretty Mimi deck The biggest issue with this deck is if it gets bled you lose which is why this deck never really saw play 
is this enough to push the deck off the ground into viability? Probably not, but eh, we can be hopeful, I suppose. Uh, Kud, Kud Doc. Uh, power change from four to six. This is a card that um, purifies adjacent units. Now that locks are, in theory, better because removal is harder to come by, uh, people will be running more locks, which means Kud, Kud Doc will be getting more value. Worst case scenario is the six for six. Now, once again, six for six nowadays for Northern Realms is really good. Tomorrow, that'll change because everything is getting uh, like power cupped like crazy. Is this good enough to see play? I think so. Um, I think people will start playing Nilfgaard. Uh, Cavs are really, I mean, we haven't gotten into it, but Cavalries are now five provisions, four strength, lock a unit. Uh, those cards will be auto included. They're very strong. Um, yeah, I, I do think this card will see play. Unlocking a unit is pretty good. Uh, if you can unlock two units, it's super duper good. So yes, I do think this card will see some play. Is it good enough to be auto included in every Northern Realms deck? Perhaps. We'll see. Depends on how many people are running locks. If everybody is running locks, sure. Uh, if everybody is not running locks, then probably not. Uh, because the odds of your opponent giving you like bleed, not very likely. And you can't use to purify offensively to remove like uh, shield or resilience. So you do have that negative uh, side effect of it only being able to hit your side of the board. Sorceress. So this is a, a change to a card. Sorceress right now is four provisions, one strength, deal three damage. Now it is five strength provisions, change from four to five category curse. Uh, ability change to zeal or to remove shield from a unit and boost off by two. Um, yeah, so on play, it's a five for five. If you remove a shield from something, it becomes a seven for five. Is seven for five good? Yup. Uh, especially for Northern Realms. This pushes like a like a mid-range type of Northern Realms list. This is just a solid card. Uh, there's another card somewhere down here that works very well with this. Uh, it's, I don't know what it's called, but it's four strength with a shield every time. If the shield's removed, it boosts off by two. So it works very well with uh, Sorceress. Um, will this card see play? Yes, I think this card will see a lot of play. Auto included in any kind of shield deck. Will shield Northern Realms be good enough? Maybe. Sorceress definitely helps. Uh, the buff to uh, the card up here. Where is it? Artificer. Um, that deck was kind of gimmicky. Maybe in the future if it gets more shield um, or type type of cards, it could see some play. Um, we'll see. Maybe there's some other reworks down below that push this archetype. But uh, just stand alone with Artificer slash the other bronze that we'll get to in a bit. Uh, yeah, this card's good. 7 for 5. Um, also, Justice and Muscle are auto-included in Squiatel. And you can use this to remove a shield from their card. So that's pretty good. 7 for 5 against Squiatel. That's not bad. This card will see play. Very strong card. Dandelion. Power change from 5 to 6. Uh, I'm going to cheat and look up this card. Whenever an allied unit gains a charge boosted by one. So this is the type of card where, like, if you have Vizigoda on the board and you play Dandelion and neither of them get removed, you win. Um, power change from five to six is significant. It's out of muzzle range. Uh, it's out of most damage range uh, other than maybe Carlos or Cleaver, however you want to call it. Um, this is a nice buff. Is this good enough to see play? Um, outside of Demoven, the answer is probably no. Is it good enough in Demovin? Probably. Boosting cards by uh, plus one is pretty good. Uh, Death Mold power change from five to six, provision seven to eight, ability change to deploy boost all allied mages by one. Pog Champ Mage Archetype. Uh, auto include in any kind of mage deck outside of a mage deck, zero play. Um, yeah. Play mage decks, I guess. Uh, I actually am looking forward to playing mage deck. Uh, Death Mold before was a mage, but it was a pretty bad mage. It damaged the unit based on how much it was boosted. It was pretty gimmicky. Um, now you can play the mage decks. So that's kind of cool. Uh, is a mage deck going to be tier one or tier two? We'll see. Dun Banner. Ability change to whenever this unit is boosted. Summon copies of it from your deck to this row. So, this is a thin card. You play it in Meave deck. I believe it's three strength. You play the card. You boost it by one. And you thin a card from your deck. Is that good? Sure. Uh, it's five provisions, so brigades are two threes for six each. This is two threes 
with the condition for five. So they're almost always better than brigades. Granted, you do need to be playing Meave. Um, also note, you can keep boosting them if you play Blue Stripe Scouts and add more into your deck. So it is another scout target where typically before it was only commandos. So that's not bad. Uh, if you didn't draw any commandos for that round, you can make your scouts worth seven. And that's good. So yeah, I think this card is auto included Meave. Outside of Meave, probably won't see too much play. I mean, you could play the Sergeants first. Hopefully it lives and then boost it. But that's dependent on you drawing a card and the card living, which isn't great. So, yeah, I think it's good in Meave. I don't think it'll see much play outside of Meave. I mean, in theory, you could play it in a full test deck, but I don't think you really want to full test a five provision bronze. You could. Kind of silly, but you could. Um, so, yeah. Very good card in me. Outside of me, probably won't see much play. Valley Board, power 7, provision 11, ability. Oh, they finally changed his ability. This art is amazing. All right. Power 7, provision 11. Uh, ability change to deploy damage enemy by 3, death blow. Repeat the deploy ability and decrease damage by 1. Ooh. So this is like super duper old Merc de Brack where it did like 3, 2, 1. Uh, so yes, in theory, if you set it up, you can do three damage and then two damage and then one damage. And then I wonder if CDPR's coding makes it deal zero damage, which you, you might think that's Papiga, but it would like, you would target a unit and just do no damage to it. Um, that actually could be significant if they ever added cards like spell power and Hearthstone, but spell damage or like card dam i don't know if they added some kind of new ability where you increase your damages on your deploy by one or whatever i don't know um yeah is this card good on play it's a 10 for 11 that's not bad i mean granted we're walking into new power levels so is, is a 10 for 11 good uh it's not the greatest but i mean if you're playing like three cards in round three and this is one of them, you're probably going to win. Like if your round three consists of like Falibor and Bloody Baron, you're in a really good spot. You're playing like two really high strength cards. Um, will you be able to consistently set up like three, two, one? Um, I would say if you could set up the three, two, it's very good. Um, the, the one extra damage isn't super significant. Um, yeah, I actually think this card will see some play. It's not bad. Uh, Deathblow 3 is not going to be too hard to set up, I would imagine. I mean, Deathblow 2 is pretty easy to set up. Deathblow 3 should be easier, right? So you're probably looking at 12 for 11. Is 12 for 11 good? Yeah. In Northern Realms? Yeah. This card's going to see play. This card's good. And it has a great art. So I very much look forward to playing this card. Very good card. Uh, Field Medic. Provision change from 5 to 4. Uh, this is the one that boosts adjacent units by two. So it's a five for four. Um, I mean, if you're playing the, I don't know what it's called. The dude who boosts itself for every boosted unit you have on the board, then I guess field medic is okay. Um, but that deck never really saw any play. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a buff, but I don't think it's good enough because having to, I don't know. It might see a tiny, tiny bit of play, but Probably won't see any play. Uh, Fultus Pride added Siege Engine category provisions, or sorry, power change from four to six, provisions nine to eight, ability to change to zero order, melee damage a unit by one, charge one, crew damage a unit by two instead. So on play, you play it as a six and you get to damage a unit by one because it does have that zeal. Um, if you play it next to two soldiers, which is the crew tag, uh, you get to do two damage. Note, this is a, uh, it does have charges. So if you're playing Demoven, you can keep giving it charges. Uh, so rest in peace, super duper full test pride and wiping the entire board. Um, but it's a more consistent card. You can just slap this on the board and it typically won't get removed. Six strength is a lot of strength. Um, removing a six is not easy to do. Uh, granted, it is melee restricted. So if you have Dragoon or Strays or any other kind of movement, uh, you do deny uh, the ongoing damage with charges. But uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, in a Demovin deck, it'll be auto-included. Outside of a Demovin deck, it won't see too much play. Um, 
maybe it's good enough with um what's it called up here i can't find it uh all right so the add ups just because you just want cards to uh, give charges to so maybe you see play in an add up list just because the more cards to give charges the better uh otherwise yeah probably won't see too much play outside of demovin forbidden magic i what is this card Oh, okay. Forbidden magic, damage an allied unit by one for every specter allied, or every allied specter unit. Uh, yeah, this card saw no play. Five provisions. Ability to change the damage an enemy unit by two. Death blow spawn a Kedwani revenant and summon it to a random allied row. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, it's like savagery in SK, except instead of spawning a five, you spawn a three. Granted, that three is a Kedwani Revenant that can get more value, and it's an engine. Um, if you're playing a heavy Revenant deck, cool. You get more. Uh, is this card go good enough? Uh, it depends. Can you consistently get the Death Blow 2 off? If you can consistently get the Death Blow 2 off, then sure, I suppose. Uh, it's another engine that your opponent has to deal with. Um, I don't know if it's good enough, though. Uh, in a short round, it's pretty bad. In round one, unless people are playing a lot of Death Blow units, it's not the best. Uh, it's, eh, I don't know. Do you guys think this card will see play? It's really good with Falibor. It is very good with Falibor. Yes, it is. I don't think this card will see too much play. If it spawned like a four point revenant instead of a three point revenant, I think this card would definitely see play. But spawning a three, I feel like it'll just die. But who knows? Maybe maybe Northern Realms runs a lot of engines and it needs that two damage. I'm trying to think of a scenario where it needs that two damage. Probably not gonna be the case. Right? If this was just do two damage, no death blow. If there's no death blow and it spawned a revenant, I think it would see some play. But the death blow I think kills the card. I don't think it'll see too much play. Uh Hubert. Oh, looks like Hubert's getting nerfed. Power five, provision seven, ability to change to zero order, give bleeding to an enemy unit for two turns. Oh. We get some F's in chat for Hubert, um, because he's dead. It seems like CDPR didn't like combo decks. Granted, uh, Kalanthi got changed. We'll get to her in a bit, but I guess I can go ahead and uh, spoil it. Kalanthi now reads, uh, play a, whatever, Northern Realms unit from your hand or Northern Realms card from your hand, and then draw any card you want from your deck. Any card. I, I guess we can skip to it. Order, play Northern Realms faction card from your hand, then draw a card of your choice. Any card, right? So if this was what it was, Plus, Hubert didn't get nerfed, it'd be completely broken because you just play Kalanthi, you play the card, um, the card that I still don't know the name, uh, Sabrina's Inferno, uh, and then you top deck Hubert every time because that's what Queen Kalanthi now does. Uh, if that's the case, it'd be insane and utterly broken um, because then you wouldn't have to play Fisher King. It's just a super consistent combo and it'd be insane. So, um, yeah. They have to nerf Hubert if they're going to make Queen Kalanthi do this. Uh, and I guess they didn't really like um, combo decks because, you know, playing a no unit deck against Kalanthi and then just losing. Tip, I mean, the problem with Kalanthi was if you could get to round three, you win and you have last say. Uh, but if you lost round one, you lost because they would bleed you and just win the game. Um, I would like to say Shoo is technically a possibility for this deck, Queen Kalanthi. I guess we'll just talk about the leader now since we're here um you can play a shoot deck because the idea is you can uh it's draw a card of your choice right so you can play shoot now that's kind of cool um if you're playing a shoot deck and there's a round where you just need to tempo out two cards you can play a northern uh, realms card from your hand you can top deck shoop, put shoop in your hand, but you don't have to play the shoop, right? So typically you always play the card you draw because it's typically your final play. Um, but like, I don't know. Let's say you just need to add power on the board. You can just throw a card from your hand on the board. So you get to play two cards in one uh, and you get to draw that shoop. Uh, if you have muzzle in the deck, it could be top decking muzzle. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of, uh, if you're playing a lot of different tech cards. Oh, shit. Oh, 
I can play this with Gigni and Scorch. Whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll play this later. This looks fun. Uh, maybe I'll play like a Gigni. Because you get to play two cards in one, right? That's the power of playing Calanthe. The problem with Calanthe is the top deck was kind of bad. But now, if you can pick anything, you can set up any combo you want. That's really... Wow. Ah, I'll have to think about this card. I think this leader might actually be good enough to see play. Possibly. We'll see. Um, I mean, just Shoop Queen Calanthe is pretty good. Like, consistently hitting Shoop 100% of the time is not bad. Plus, a lot of the Northern Realms cards are pretty good. Like, a lot of them are pretty good, like, uh, mid rangey type of cards. So, yeah. Uh, Shoop Calanthe could actually be pretty good. All right. Let's go back. Where were we? We did... Field Medic, Full Test Pride we did, Forbidden Magic we did, Hubert got nerfed. Uh, what is it? Five power, Provision 7, Ability, Change to Zeal, Order, Give Bleeding Enemy. Uh. Okay, I mean, I guess it's another engine for Demovan, but Bleeding is typically, or always worse than damage. Um, yeah, wow. This card went from, like, the entire deck is built around to, yeah, nobody plays it. That's, it's okay. I mean... It's a seven for seven. It's not bad. Like, it's okay. Like, you'll probably play it in a Hubert, uh, not a Hubert deck. A, well, you're probably gonna play Hubert in a deck that plays Hubert. Um, it's pretty good in demo event. Outside of a demo event, it probably won't see too much play. John Natalis, power two, provision eight, ability change to play melee, play a warfare from your deck. Warfare is a new special for, um, or special category tag for Northern Realms. It's basically what Kira used to do. It's just a little cheaper now. All of them are eights now, so, uh, uh, if you're playing a super heavy warfare deck, you can play John Natalis. Are, warf are warfares that good? Uh, so far, I've been, they've been pretty underwhelming, so probably not. But uh, yeah, if you want that consistency, you can add John Natalis. Kadewani Cavalry. Ability to change the shield. Whenever this unit loses shield, boost self by two. So this is the card I was talking about earlier with uh, the Sorceress. So you play this card first, and then you play the Sorceress after. You proc the shield off, giving plus two to sorcerers, and you get plus two on this. This is a six for four. This card is super good. Um, I've been playing a lot of muscle and Scoyatel. It's basically auto-include, um, which means this is a four for four with shield, but if they remove the shield, it's a six for four. Uh, and what we've learned from shields on units that aren't engines is they're actually really good. Um, if you're playing muscle... And your opponent is playing SK, which a lot of people play SK because SK is pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of random damage in SK. Uh, you have Marauders. You have uh, Dagger Herald combo. You have Hound Snout. Um, Butcher, I, I guess. It's not random, but sometimes there's nothing else to target. Uh, shield's very powerful. And not only do you deny the damage from the shield, you actually get positive value on your side of the board. Um, yeah, this card is just really, really good. Um, and I'm assuming... If this has shield, loses a shield, and then you give it a shield, and then it loses shield again, it does get the boost, right? It's, I'm assuming it's not a one-time thing, because it just says whenever. So if you're playing this, and you play Artificer, you just give it shield again, and then you remove the shield, and you just keep getting value. So yeah, this card's really good. Like, you don't even have to play a shield deck for this card. You just throw it in, it's a 4 for 4. There's a good chance that a random ping hits it, and it goes to 6. That's not bad. Uh, I would still play this with the Sorceress. I think Cavalry and Sorceresses are probably going to be close to auto-include in most Northern Realms deck. Um, you just play two of each, unless, of course, you're playing a Shoop deck. Um, they're just good enough. Um, and once again, the Sorceress does have the option of removing uh, shields from your opponent's side of the board. Um, so do keep that in mind. Yeah, it's a really good card. It's basically a muscle that's better. Yeah. And a faction that would love a card like this. It's proactive. It's just a good card. It will see a lot of play. Uh, and obviously, it is very good in a Rogner list. Is Rogner a good deck? Probably not. But, I mean, cards that help the lists are always welcome. What time will the update hit tomorrow? I have no idea. Uh, Kadewani Knight provisions 5 to 4 ability to change to when played or summoned from the deck boost self by 3. Uh... Okay. This used to boost self by four. Now it's by three.
When played or summoned. Wait, it's for provision. You just portal this. Right? When played or summoned from deck, boost spell self by three. If you have two of them and they're both four strength, you get two sevens. You get 14 points. You play portal and you get a 14. Is that good? <laughs> yes, that's pretty good. Uh, typically, portal, you slap on engines. The problem with engines is if they're removed, the portal is kind of underwhelming. Um, yeah, this is insane. That's just crazy. Like, if, if you can afford to run only two 4P cards in your deck, and it being these two knights, and you can afford to run portal, it's a 14-point slam. Like, turn one, throw Roach into the deck, and you just... 17 points on the board. Not susceptible to tall removal. They're not engines. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, this card's really good. I don't know what else to say. I mean, you could scout it and then hand sold it and get more value. That's a pretty bad play, but you could do it, I suppose. Um, yeah, this card's really good. I, wow. Um, <laughs> Is it auto-include? It's not going to be auto-include just because there are a lot of other fours that you want to play in your deck. So, we'll see. If you can run a list with Avalok, the Sage, Portal, and maybe the artifact that boosts a unit by plus three, and there's not too much artifact removal, this might actually be very good. We'll see. Uh, the, the fact that you can't play any other four provision cards kind of sucks because there are actually some pretty good four provision cards now, um, like the uh, Kidwani Cavalry that we just talked about. Um, so we'll see. I don't actually know if you can get away with running zero fours in your deck other than these two. But if you can, this card's insane. Um, Kidwani Revenant. Uh, draw Curse Knight added Curse category. What? Oh. These three cards they added curse category to. Okay. Uh, Kadewani Sergeant, provisions change from five to four. Oh. Huh. Oh. That's really good. Kadewani Sergeant is the card that has two charges and boosts a unit by plus one, plus one. Um, you can play this in a portal deck. You play Meave, you play Portal, and you play Tridums, and you play Kadewani Sergeants. Uh, the best case scenario is you get one of each. And then you Caretaker Portal in round two and do it again. Okay, you probably shouldn't do that, but I mean, you could. Um, yeah, and then you can use the Sergeants and boost the uh, Tridums immediately. So that's kind of cool. Um, will this card see play? I mean, the card already see plays right now, and it's very good, and it's getting better. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a boost Meave deck is actually going to be good. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, this card is really good. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't play this card. It's just really good. The only reason you don't play this card is if you're running this card. Other than that, yeah, you're probably going to be playing this. It's auto-included me for sure. And it'll probably see a good amount of play in other decks too. Kira Mets. Wow. Card everybody is talking about. Um, power change from 2 to 7. So this is no longer the tutor card uh, that went to John Natalis. Kira Mets. Power change from 2 to 7, provisions 9 to 10, ability change to deploy, give vitality to adjacent units for the duration equal to their base power. So, yeah, this card is insane. It is a... <sighs> so when you play, it, it's 7 strength. Uh, if you have 2 units next to it of any any value, um, you immediately get vitality on them and you immediately get the vitality procs, right? You get plus 1 at the end of the turn. So worst case scenario, if you have 2 units on the board, it's a 9 for 10. Now... If your opponent doesn't have removal on those cards that you gave vitality, it keeps getting more value, right? So if you play this on two fours and your opponent doesn't have removal, you're looking at four plus four plus seven. That's a 15 for 10. Is a 15 for 10 good? Yep. That's pretty good. Um, not to mention, we got a couple other really thick cards. Um, it, it seems like Northern Realms just has these really, really big uh provisioned high body cards right so like bloody baron and uh what's it called where is it my new favorite northern realms card the card that pings for three two one i can't see it because i'm blind 
uh, here it is, Folly Boy. So both of these are very high provisions, but very high strength, right? So seven and uh, Bloody Baron seven, but it can be eight if you play it for formation, uh, which means if you have two sevens and you if you draw Kira as well and you play Kira next to those two sevens, you're looking at 21 value for 10. It's pretty decent. Granted, you do need seven turns for Vitality to proc off, but if you turn one Bloody Baron and then turn two, kill like a three drop and then play Kira, um, yeah, you win. Um, yeah, this card is super scary. Like, auto-include in every Northern Realms deck scary because it's just good enough. Like, you don't have to be playing those two cards that I just mentioned, Bloody Baron and uh, Falibor. It's just good enough. Like, you throw this on a three or a four or anything more than that, and you're very happy. Um, this card is scary enough that I might actually start playing Gigni because the idea is if you're playing this, uh, the two units next to it are also going to be pretty sizable and eventually you're going to be looking at roughly three sevens or maybe seven, seven, eight, in which case you ping the eight down to seven. Um, yeah, Gigni in a list that can do damage will be getting tons of value against Kira. So I will probably be playing Gigni, um, possibly Scorch possibly Erden. So there's a lot of boosts in this faction, especially, so you got Cavalry, you have uh, this card, Knight. So there, there's a good chunk of boost. You have Kira, you have Bloody Baron, you have a lot of cards that now boost, which means cards like Erden are really good. Um, Erden's probably going to be getting like 20 plus value against this type of deck. If they're row stacking, you can force it with like Ard oh, or... Trap. <laughs> what's it called? Uh... The, the novella in there it is. The Ginger Ninja. Thank you for the Prime sub. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, Kira is auto-included in every Northern Realms deck. This card is absolutely insane. There's no reason not to play this. If you're not playing Tall Removal and they have Falibor and Bloody Baron and they play both of them and you play they play Kira, you lose. So yeah. Have fun with that. Um... <laughs> Here's a very good card. Craft this card if you're going to play Northern Realms. Auto-include. King full test provisions change from 14 to 15. Ability tweaked order boost an allied unit by 2 and give it zeal charge 3. Uh, excuse me? They said ability tweaked. But they didn't, they just made it two instead of one, right? I'm assuming the wording's the same. Uh, unless I'm missing something on this wording, it's just full test except it boosts by two instead of one. Full test is already seeing play right now. It is the second best or first best Northern Realm stack other than uh, Hensel. Not to mention, we'll get to it, but Roche is also very good for full test. I mean, yeah, uh, Northern Realms Tier 0. Are you guys ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is too much. They overdid it. I can tell you, like, with 99% certainty that this is too much. And, yeah, this is way too broken. Um, I don't actually think Foltest needed any buff whatsoever. I would have, like, been okay with this. This... Is crazy. An extra, like, you play this on Saltkirk, you're now, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, King Foltest, tier one. Wow, can't believe I said that. Uh, King Foltest, tier one. Northern Realms, you better be scared because they're coming and they're going to smash everything. SK, you're done. Uh, King Hensel provisions change from seven. <laughs> Uh, can you copy of an ally do you know the battlefield from your deck boosted by three and give it a zeal what i don't understand like this and this would have made sense like three months ago they're finally nerfing hensel hensel don't get me wrong two months ago was the best leader but like okay whatever um 
I mean, if you played Hensel, just play Full Test, because Full Test is better. Um, yeah. All right. Well, not much to talk about. Hensel's worse, but Full Test is OP, OP. Knighthood, provision change from 7 to 6, uh, category Warfare. So, provision, uh, Knighthood is a 6 random boost. Um, yeah. This card is very good with Tritum Infantry. Granted, Tritum Infantry has to be the only unit on that row. Um, it is Warfare, so you can tutor it out with Natalis. So, I mean, in theory, you could go turn one Tritum, turn two John Natalis into Knighthood. Is that good? Eh, it's okay. Um, if you're playing a Meeb deck, you probably play this card, simply because uh, if you're playing a lot of cards that can get extra value from getting boosted, Knighthood's just... On average, really good. You're you're looking at getting minimum six if you get super unlucky, uh, upwards of twelve. So yeah, uh, knighthood will probably see play in me outside of me. Probably won't see too much play. Six for six, is fine. But nowadays, after this patch, it's not going to be as good. Lear and Arbalist. Okay, uh, Arbalists are now four provisions, so you can portal Arbalists. So basically, if you're playing Arrakis Queen and your opponent plays Portal into two Arbalists, you concede because you just lost the game. Um, yeah. Will you run Portal double Arbalists? Maybe. Uh, there's a lot of other 4P cards that we've talked about that are also very good. I, I think Portal is just good like there are so many good 4p northern realms cards that like shit all right you ready portal caretaker renew oh there we go triple portal every turn oh baby tons of fours um yeah i don't think that'll be a thing but you could if you really wanted to there are enough fours in the game for northern realms that you could play portal three times and be happy with every outcome um yeah so this is obviously a buff um it's good for hensel uh hensel got nerfed by 1p but i guess they actually got buffed by 1p because this card got uh buffed and these two or this was auto included two of so i i guess you could say hensel got buffed question mark um yeah i don't know if you run portal double this card we'll see um but yeah obviously buff this is a little scary arbalist is one of those cards where if it hits the board and doesn't get removed you lose. Uh, and now that it's cheaper, yeah. Lyrian Cavalry. Four strength. Another fantastic card with Portal. Uh, this was typically the Hensel go-to. Ooh, okay. This is interesting. So typically in Hensel, you would play Portal for strictly double Cav, right? Uh, and then you would play something like uh, Arbalist from hand. And then you would Hensel it. You can't actually do that anymore. Um, because if you play Cav, or sorry, you play Portal, you can hit Arbalist. And that kind of just, well, okay. Meh. Okay, so, uh, right, that's actually a big, this right here is actually a nerf to Hensel, isn't it? Because it means you can't go Portal Cav anymore. You just can't. Or, or... You run your two... Uh, okay, this is the other option. You run two Arbalists and you run one Cav. The idea is you play Portal, you're guaranteed one Cavalry, and then you're guaranteed one Arbalist, and then you use Hensolt on that Arbalist. Uh, that is the workaround, which I suppose is fine. That's actually a pretty decent tempo play. Portal into Hensolt on the same turn is a lot. Uh, so yeah, actually, I, I guess that works. Um, your mulligans are a little wonky, and it means you can never keep an Arbalist in your hand. And it means you have to draw Portal. If you don't draw Portal, you have no Arbalist, unless you keep an Arbalist and Mulligan Portal, in which, or don't draw Portal, which means that game plan is kind of wonky. So yeah, I don't know what Hensel's going to do. I mean, I think the easier solution is just don't play Hensel and play Full Test. But yeah, if you're playing Hensel, you might have to do the, the one Cav to Arbalist plan. Uh, Lyrian Lanschnest, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> ability to change the formation order. Damage a unit by one. Inspire damage a unit. Oh, I'm going to drink some water.
All right. This is the current card that saw no play. Now it is. Mm. So this card's pretty good. I'm assuming the stat lines are staying the same. It's three strength, five provisions. Um, damage a unit by one, inspire damage a unit by three instead. So if you play this on the melee row and you play me, you can instantly ping a unit for three. That's pretty good. It's a six for five with removal. Um, if you're not playing a Meave deck or you're off Meave ping, you can play it on the range row, wait one turn, and then ping for three. Is this good enough? It's not a bad card in Meave. It's a six for five. The question is, how badly does Northern Realms want three targeted damage? If the answer is yes, they do want three targeted damage, then yeah, this card's pretty good in Meave. Um, we'll just see cards you play outside of Meave. Uh, if you play it on the back row, it's a four. How easy is it to kill a four? I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to be running four damage. Uh, if people aren't running four damage, then it's like a seven for five, right? Because it boosts itself by one and seven for five is good. And it has removal. So if a lot of people are not running um, removal, then yeah, it's just a good card. It's a seven for five with removal. Cool. Strong card. Um, assuming me. You ideally want to play this in me. Uh, Scytheman, power change from two to three, added category soldier. Soldier is important for uh, crew, which is one of the keywords. Um, but yeah, so this is the card that gets plus one for every boosted card on your side of the board. This card, this card saw zero play. Um, power level from two to three does plus one, but it's not good enough to see play. So uh, unless me boost everything is like a really good archetype, this card will see no play. Mad Cayenne. So I'm assuming this is replacing current Cayenne. Power six, provision eight, ability change to formation order. Damage an enemy unit by the Mad Cayenne's boost. Death blow, destroy Mad Cayenne. Isn't it just like old death mold? Damage an enemy unit by Mad Cayenne's boost. That's what death mold used to do. Death mold didn't have this part. It's just a death mold, except if you kill the unit, oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> your Cayenne commits Sudoku. Ah. In our mad strong. Symmetry. Thank you for the nine months. Um, yeah, this card sucks. I don't know what the point of this card is. I mean... Okay, you can play it on the melee row. You get formation. You TA it. And then... You need to hit a six. Because if you hit a five, it kills itself. Which is... Why? I don't understand. Why did you add this? This basically means you cannot kill an engine. Which is the only reason why you would play this card. I don't understand. I, I, this card sucks. I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, if it didn't have the death blow, it'd be pretty good. Because then you could TA it and kill a 5, which is actually pretty good. Um, yeah, it probably would have been broken with TA. But now it's just shit. So, yeah... I don't know what the point of this card is. I have no idea. Um, okay. It sucks. Margarita. Provisions 8 to 7. Ability change. Zeal order. Lock an enemy unit. Ability changed? Did Margarita not have zeal before? I thought it did. Did it not have zeal before? Oh, there's no charges anymore. Ooh. Okay, so it's worse than Death Mold, um, which you might think that's silly, but every now and then it actually was good enough to use Death Mold charges and give it more charges so that it could lock again, which was actually pretty good. Um, and in a meta where locks are going to be stronger, I can understand why they nerfed it uh, with the ability change. Um, seven, it's better than Dora Gary. If you need a lock, you can play it. Otherwise, you don't. Not Death Mold. You know what I mean. Margarita. Whatever. Not... Uh, Mold. Uh, the Papiga leader that nobody plays. Uh, Demavend. There we go. You know what I mean, chat. Nenaki, power change six to four. Power change six to four, ability change zero, order, range boost, and unit by one charge four.
Okay. I mean, okay. Is losing two strength worth a zero plus one charge? Probably. Um, typically, when you play Neneki, it got moved and you lost all value. Um, so immediately getting the value is actually pretty good. If you're combining this with Tritum, it's very good. Um, yeah, if you're playing a Meave deck, this card is auto-include because you just play a Tritum, they typically don't kill it, and then you just slam Neneki and it's a 4 plus 4 plus 4. 12 point play. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, this card is auto-include in Meave, I think. Maybe? Maybe it's not. Uh, if you have the space and you're already running two Tritums, which you probably should be, um, then yeah, this card will see a lot of play in Meave. How good will a Meave deck be? I have no idea. Odrin, power change from 4 to 6, provision 78, ability change to resupply, boost self by 1, inspired, boost self by 2 instead. Uh, okay. Odrin used to give one charge to all units on deploy, now it... Uh, okay. This is whenever you play Warfare. I don't think a Warfare deck will be very good. Which means I don't think this card is going to be very good. So... Yeah. Also, it's boosting self by one. If this card gets really big, it's just tall removal. Also, resets is our thing. I don't think this card is very good. Um, yeah. PFI, provision change from uh, five to four. This is the card. I think it's the card that like boosts itself. Uh, yeah, it's the five that's one strength that boosts self by four. So it's one cheaper. This card saw no play. Uh, is this good enough to see play now? What's the significance of boosting? Not much, um, other than the Scythemen up here. Um, <clears throat> also it plays into Erden and all other forms of reset, which means I don't think it'll see much play because... It's a 5 for 4, which, like, currently would be good enough, but starting tomorrow is not good enough. So I don't think this will see any play. Uh, you're just giving more, Erden more value, and Erden's already going to be pretty good. That is true. It is good against Bounty. But, yeah. No. Um, that is not a good enough reason to play this card. If you want to play around Bounty, just play Cuckoo Dock. Don't play this card. Uh, Prince, ability change to formation order damage in enemy unit by 4. Inspire dual enemy unit instead. Oh, they just said inspired. Okay. It's the same card. Uh, they just, instead of, if this card is boost, duel an enemy, it's inspired. They just used the keyword instead. It's the same card. Uh, Prince Dennis, power change from 2 to 4, provision 7 to 8, ability change to deploy melee, boost an ally by 4, deploy range, boost 4 allies by 1. Ooh. So on play, it's an 8 for 8. No matter how you do it. But boosting four allies by one is pretty significant. Like, if you have two Tritums and... Uh, I don't know the name of the card. The new Syndicate Northern Realms card. Seven provisions, five strength. Every time you boost it, it gives a uh, uh, bleed two. So that card... Like, if you can have... Like, a tried Like, of those three cards, if you can have two of them on the board before you play the Stunners, that's starting to look pretty good. Right? If you have two Tritums, this isn't an eight for an eight. It's a... 10 for 8. Um, yeah, this is actually pretty good. Uh, Stennis was seeing no play before, even in, like, uh, demo van list. So, also, actually, okay, boost 4 allies by 1 is also really good with a Scytheman. I don't know if this card alone is enough to push a Scytheman deck, but it definitely helps. Um, you could play something like Jermaine and then play Prince Stennis. Boost the 4 cows by plus 1. Me boosts, like, the germain and then all of a sudden your scytheman's looking pretty good i mean that right there you're looking at eight value on scytheman for four that's not bad um would a deck like that ever exist i have no idea uh but this definitely helps that's actually kind of exciting maybe a boost northern realms deck could actually work huh i don't know cool card i like it uh princess ada provision 16 so this is the leader change ability change to order damage an enemy unit by eight Death will give bleeding to adjacent units for uh, duration equal to excess damage. So, ooh, units. That's important. 
Um, so at a right now does eight damage. This now also does eight damage. But if you kill a unit and you overkill, uh, adjacent units get the damage excess. So if you kill a six, the adjacent units to it get uh, two bleeding each. So the best value on this card technically is to kill a one. Because then you get seven bleed on adjacent. So you're looking at 15 value. Um, granted, there has to be a one in the middle of two units that are seven or higher. Which is super duper hard to do. But in theory, <laughs> you could get that much value. Um, but that'll never happen realistically. Um, so typically when Ada was played, it was with Hubert. Um, so in this case with the, the bleed, it wouldn't really matter because it was typically your final play and you wouldn't actually get to utilize the bleed. But since Hubert no longer does that anymore, um, yeah, maybe you can play this. I don't know. So like this is the type of thing where you play if you need more removal in Northern Realms. The thing is, there's no such thing as invisible leaders. What I mean by this is when you queue into Ada, you can see that they're playing Ada. So like your high priority engines, you can just stick next to really small units so that the bleed isn't as bad. Um, so there is definitely some counterplay against Ada. I don't know. We'll see. I don't think this is better than Calanthe or better than Full Test. I mean, Full Test is bonkers now. So, yeah, I don't think this will be better than Full Test, but maybe you like playing cute leaders, and so this is a buff. I don't know. I don't know what kind of deck you would want to play Ada in, but maybe like a hard removal deck. But without Hubert, it just feels weird. So, it's definitely a buff. Is it enough to see play? Time will tell. Priscilla, ability to change the formation order, give a unit one charge. Cooldown one inspired, give a unit two charges instead. Okay. Oh my. Okay. So it's the same as before, except now if you inspire it, aka okay, boost it, you get to give it two charges instead of one. That's pretty good. Um, before it only gave one charge, now it gave two charges. Two charges, one charge is typically worth two damage. Yeah, well, if you played this card before, it's even better now. So, uh, yeah, good card. Much better. Is this enough to push Demavend? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, that's insane. If this card stick. Plus four extra damage a turn, plus Demovin is every other turn. That's a lot. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this, this, is, this is a pretty good card now. Uh, you don't even have to play this in Demovin. You can play it outside of Demovin. Um, yeah, it's just good enough. Uh, Queen Kale I mean, maybe you can make like a Meave deck that utilizes... I don't know. Ah, I might be pushing it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Queen Calanthe, ability change to order, play Northern Realms faction card from your hand and draw a card of your choice. Talked about this a little earlier. Um, you get to choose any card from your deck. Before, you had to play, like, Fisher King, which is really slow and awkward. Uh, and, like, you don't really want to play a four in round three uh, to get a, a combo. You could just get any card you want whenever you want. It's just a Royal Decree tutor anything. It's not even Royal Decree because you can tutor specials too. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, computer search. Great comparison. Some of you will understand what that is. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so Queen Calanthe got a massive buff. Um, do note, Calanthe decks were typically Hubert decks. You would play... Um, I, I mean, I already talked about this. Um, so it's a little worse because a combo deck no longer exists. But you could just play this in a Shoop deck. You could run this with, like, tech cards. You could play this with Gigni. You can play this kind of like a poet in the sense that, like, you need extra tempo in the turn. So you play Northern Realms card, and then you play another card from your hand, uh, and then you put, like, a really good card into your hand that you would normally want to draw later, such as maybe Muzzle or Shoop. Um, yeah, this ability is strong enough. It's kind of like... It's like Ada. No. It's like Dana. I don't know why I said Ada. It's like Dana, except... Better? Wait a minute. Is this a better Dana? Yeah, it is. It's literally better. Because, oh my goodness, this is so much better than Dana. 
So, Dana, ah, oh, because the flexibility of not having to play the card, right? Like, imagine this. Imagine being able to play a card and then putting Skags into your hand so that you can, like, Ithlan boost it or, like, Agitator boost it, right? Like, that flexibility would actually be pretty good. Yeah, uh, this is really good. You can set up cool combos like Gigni, Regis, Scorch. Um, I actually think this card, this leader will see play. The only reason this leader would not see play is if full test is the only thing people play. But I think people like combos. I think people will play Kalanthi. Um, I, I, I think Kalanthi is actually a good leader now. But we'll see. Reinforced Ballista, added Siege Engine category, power 3 to 4, ability to change to formation, order damage a unit by 1, charge 1, resupply, gain 1 charge. Um, probably not going to see much play. I don't think a Warfare deck is going to be good. Um, maybe in the future, if we get some more Warfare slash resupply cards. I mean, like, the idea is you get a bunch of cards on the board, and they all say resupply, and then you play a Warfare card, and then all the cards proc, and you get tons of value. Uh, the problem is, I don't think there are that many resupply cards for that to actually consistently happen. And typically, you would want that to happen over multiple rounds. So, yeah, I just don't think there's going to be enough resupply cards for, like, a Warfare resupply deck to work. So, for those reasons, I don't think this card's very good. Reinforced Trebuchet added Siege Engine category. Ability to change the range on turn end. Damage a random enemy unit on the range row by one. Inspire damage a random enemy unit instead. Woo! Wait. Oh. Isn't this just better? Because if you boost it... So the problem with current Reinforced Trebuchet is if they don't stack melee, you lose all your value. Well, now if you Meave buff it, or any other buff, it starts pinging the melee row. That's good. Um, It's good enough where you just play this and Meave. They play a card in the range row, you play this, they start stacking the melee row. You don't care. You just move buff it. Uh, this card's pretty good. It's a good way. It's a good engine. Yeah, this card's going to see play. 100%. I mean, this card already see play, and it's better. So, yeah. Uh, it is row locked, I'm assuming, still. So, uh, movement does counter it. But there are so many cards in Northern Realms uh, that need to get row moved that you can't move them all. So, unless you play one card, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, yeah. Big buff. Reinforcements change primary category to Warfare. Okay. Uh, this is probably the only playable Warfare at the moment. Okay. Uh, Reynard Odo. Odo? Odo? Whatever. Power 5 to 6, provision 8 to 9, ability to change the melee whenever you play a unit booster by 1. Oh. That's definitely not what it used to do. It was with charge, right? Whenever you... Whenever an allied unit with charge is played, give it one charge. Wow, so you didn't even have to play this in a trident deck. You just play it in any deck you want. Boosting by one. You play this on the board, and you play a trident, it instantly boosts. That's kind of cool. Um, question is, can you actually play this? Six power, provisions nine. Oh, it's melee? Okay, it's unplayable. <laughs> if this didn't have the word melee on it, I, I would say it's playable. Um, if it has melee, I don't think it's playable. Um... It's already a 6 for 9 that takes 3 turns for it to, like, break even, assuming you're not boosting, like, Tritums. So, unless... Is there a card that plays multiple units in one turn? It's whenever you play, not summon. So, like, even, like, Commandos, I'm assuming, don't get boosted. So, yeah, this card seems kind of underwhelming. If it was, like... If this card was, like, 7 provisions, then, yeah, it would be good because it's it's really cheap. But nine provisions. It doesn't make the cut. It's not good enough. Um, <clears throat> not very good. Pikeman, ability change to deploy damage an enemy unit by two, resupply, boost self by one. Isn't Pikeman the death blow one or whatever? Yeah. Damage by two. Damage an enemy unit by two, resupply, boost self by one. Oh. So it's a five on play. I mean, okay. So if you're playing a resupply deck with Warfare, this card's auto include because it has the word resupply on it. If you're not playing that deck, this card sucks. So this card sucks. Rush Merciless. Ooh, another big, big gold card. <clears throat> I need to drink water. I'm going to start losing my voice. I can already feel it going. Hmm. 
<clears throat> uh, Rush Merciless, five power provisions, 11 ability change to deploy damage an enemy unit by two death blow, gain zeal, order spawn blue stripes commanders on own row. So this is another way to get blue stripe commanders, which if you're playing a commander deck is good because sometimes you don't draw the commanders in your hand in round one. Um, in terms of just raw points, it is a five that deals two. So worst, worst, worst case scenario, if you can't set up the death blow and it gets removed and you don't get the order, it's a seven for 11, which is pretty bad. Granted, I think you can get the death blow two off pretty consistently. Um, Vest also got changed. I guess we can skip to Vest for now. Uh, Vest power change from three to five provisions, nine to eight damage, uh, four to two. So this is a nerf in the sense that it does less damage. Um, but it's a buff if you're planning on using the zeal ability. Um, because typically, Vest at 3 is pretty easy to remove. Vest at 5, yeah, you're probably not removing that. Uh, you can muzzle it, but then it means you're not muzzling Botchling or any other high-priority engine. So uh, this is a buff if you're planning on using the zeal. And the zeal is very good here. So what you can do is use Vest, ping a unit by 2, play Roche, finish the unit off, uh, you, you get the death blow, you get the blue stripe commando, and then you can use this, you can use Vess's zeal to give the blue stripe commandos zeal, and then you get to pull the other two out. So this becomes an 11, uh, pull two fours out of your deck. Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Not to mention if you're already playing like a commando scout deck, it's just even better. Um, also this is very good in a full test deck and full test just got buffed. So, yeah. Um, very good card in full test. Probably auto-include in full test because Scout Commando package is already auto-included and this is just makes it better. Um, yeah, there's no reason not to play this in a full test deck. That's simple. Very good card. Ronvid. Uh, provision change from 8 to 6. Okay. Um, Ronvid is 1 strength. Wait, does he start it? Oh, he starts at... I don't know what he starts at. He start, No, he does start at 1. Okay, so... He starts at 1, which means you could marching orders your Ronvid in turn 1 um, to immediately get it. And it's a 6 for 6 on play. Uh, it is a crew. Or, it is a soldier, so you get crew, which is kind of nice, which is what it used to be for in Old Gwent. Like, the, the crew pockets were very important. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and on top of that, it keeps respawning every time you play a soldier in round two and three. Or if you just kill it with, like, revenants. So, uh, yeah, I actually think this card will see play. Um, carryover is... It's not a ton of carryover, but one carryover is more than zero. Uh, granted, it's conditional. You do have to play a soldier. This still helps. Uh, it's good with revenants. Um, it's super good if you can draw it in round one. Like, really, really good if you can draw this in round one. Because you just play it and it gets lots of value. Is it good in round two and three? Eh, like playing this in round three is pretty bad, but six for six is not the end of the world. For worst case scenario, six for six, that's okay. Um, I think if you can actually utilize crew and you need the soldiers, I do think this card will see play in that deck. Uh, if you don't care about the soldiers, then there are probably better cards to play. So yeah, much better now. Siege Master Power, 5-3 ability change to deploy, boost an ally by 2, resupply boost, Jason Siege Engine by 1. Uh, we saw this card yesterday, it seemed pretty lackluster. I don't know, it's another one of those cards where if you're playing resupply, uh, resupply deck with Warfare, then it's pretty good outside of exactly that deck, it's really bad. Um, like, it, it, it's a 5 for 5 on play, which isn't good anymore. And it has a potential to go higher. I don't know. Maybe maybe there is going to be a Warfare deck. Because if you can actually get like 8 resupply cards on the board. And none of them get removed. Granted that'll never happen. Because that's just. That would be like saying. I'm playing Demovan. And I'm going to play all my engines. And none of them will get removed. And I'll just win the game. I mean yeah you do just win the game. But how many times does that happen? Yeah, you have to queue in the monsters. That's it. Otherwise it doesn't work. Um. And I think this is more gimmicky. So I feel like this, like, Resupply Warfare is just worse than Demovend. And Demovend was already pretty bad. So, yeah. We'll see. Siege Support. Power 2 to 3. Ability to change to deploy melee. Give one charge to an allied unit to play range. Boost an ally by one order. Give ally zeal. Oh. 
Wait. Oh, they completely changed this card. Oh, no, they didn't. Sorry, I was thinking of different cards. Two support. Uh, it currently gives two charges to an allied machine. Now... Mm, this is pretty big. What's the P on this? Four? I mean, if you're running charge decks, it's actually not that bad. Giving a charge is typically worth two points, which means it's a five for four, and you have the ability to give a unit zeal. Zeal is pretty significant. It's like a mini vest. It's basically a mini vest. Uh, if you can utilize zeal, then it's pretty good. If you can't utilize zeal, it's not good. So, yeah. If you can utilize zeal and, like, a, a good chunk of zeals, then you can play this card. Otherwise, it's not really worth it. Charges are worth one. Oh! Uh, yes and no so there's the uh, what's it called it's pretty far up here uh six strength you put on the melee row Fultus pride is two damage if you have the crew pocket but yes I, I guess a lot of them are ones but yeah it, it's going to come down to whether or not you can utilize the zeal because you can always just play it and boost an ally by one then again that's a four for four which is yeah you have to be utilizing the zeal if you're not utilizing the zeal it's terrible siege tower power change from three to four added siege engine category ability change to deploy gain vitality for three turns crew boosts off by three instead oh oh eh? didn't this guy used to boost adjacent okay that kind of a very different card okay it's kind of better because it means you don't need two units next to it um for it to get value except you do need two ne units next to it because you need the crew because gaining vital vitality is pretty bad um yeah how expensive is this card five so if you play it and you have the two crew it's a seven for five. That's not bad. I mean, if you're playing a lot of soldiers and you're playing and you can hit these crew pockets, maybe you're playing Ronvid, then yeah, it's actually fine. Seven for five is good enough. Um, so yeah, this is going to be dependent on how many soldiers you're running and how often you can hit that crew pocket. If you can hit that crew pocket like 80 plus percent of the time, I think this card's good. Uh, Sile... Provisions change from 8 to 7. Before anybody tells me, yes, I realize I'm saying the name incorrectly, but yes. If you prefer, I can say Sheila or Shalala or whatever. Uh, provisions change from 8 to 7. It's a mage, right? I can't even type in Sile. Uh, yeah, this is just strictly better for mage decks. Pog mage decks. Will mage decks be good? Who knows? Draw my ability to change to every allied turn on turn end. Boost the allied unit to the right by one. This card's six provisions for strength. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Priest in that every turn you get to boost a unit by... Well, you get plus one a turn. Priest is plus one a turn except it boosts itself, whereas this is boosts uh, an allied. Boosting an ally is actually better because of cards like Tritum. Um, I mean... If you play this next to an Ana, they just go off on each other. And they just grow each other and they just keep growing. Um Yeah, that's pretty good. Like tons of value. Um Shit. Okay, wait, this is on the right. So if you play this and then you play an Ana, this boosts the Ana, the Ana boosts this, and whatever is next to the Ana. And then the turn after you can play Tritum in between and you get two boosts a turn. Is that good? One, two, three, four, five. You're doing five a turn with that. That's pretty good. Um, wow, that's a lot of points. Five a turn with three cards. Well, oh, technically four, but the fourth card can be anything. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want to play an engine Northern Realm deck, this card's good. Is it good enough to see play in every Northern Realm deck? Probably not. It is six provisions. It is a little on the expensive side, especially considering uh, a lot of these Northern Realms cards that are very good are between four and five provisions. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if it makes a cut. It's pretty good in Meave, though. Uh, infantry. Tamerian Infantry. Power change from three to four.
Damage an enemy unit by one for every boosted unit on this row. Three for five. Um, I don't know. If you're playing a heavy boost deck, this card's good. If you're not playing a heavy boost deck, this card sucks. The end. Thaler, power five, provision eight, ability to change the formation. Give three charges to an allied unit. Oh. Hm. That's a lot of charges. Well, granted, nothing... So, other than full test pride, is there anything that does two? Oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> is there any card that can utilize a charge and make it two value? Does anybody know? Because Mark Brock is different now. Gwaldrim, thank you for the prime sub. Hubert? Oh, sure. You're right. Hubert is to bleed. So, Hubert. Okay. So, you have Hubert and you have full test pride. Is that good enough to run Thaler? If you're running both of them, sure. Because you can always give three charges to something that does one damage, does an eight for eight, and typically those charges are removing things, and more removal is good. So, yeah, I think he will see some play. He's by no means auto-include, but he's not bad. Uh, he's going to go from unplayable to, eh, you could play him. Trebuchet unit change to bombardment special card. Uh, okay. Provision 5 category warfare ability split 4 damage randomly between all enemies. Increase damage by 1 for each siege engine you control. Uh. Is there actually enough support to make a resupply warfare deck? There, there, there's more cards than I thought. Yes? What's the point? Well, the idea is it's a warfare card, and you want to play as many warfare cards as you can in a resupply deck. Right? Once again, the resupply deck is like, get five or six units on the board, and then like slam four warfare cards, and all your cards get like plus one or two value. Uh, and if you have a, a like, seize engine and resupply, you get tons of value off of this. This is worth like I don't know, like six, seven, eight value, and you proc all your resupply cards. Uh, is it good enough? I don't think so, because once again, you have to have multiple units on the board for these cards to be getting full effect. And in the past, Demoven was not good, and Demoven had the same contingency. If you have multiple units on the board, it's very good, but that never happened. They got removed. Typically, you have like one or two units, uh, and resupply with like only one unit on the board is not that good. So it's super hard to evaluate maybe the power level is just insane and maybe not a lot of removal is in the meta and maybe this is actually good enough um but without testing it because it is a completely new mechanic uh, it, it's really hard to say but my guess is i don't think it's going to be very good vandegriff ability to change the resilient shield what okay so vandegriff is now Eight provisions, five strength, resilient shield. Sure. Um. Wow. <laughs> That's really good. Um. Gabor is nine provisions, but it's an engine and it has flex. So I'd, I'd still say Gabor is better. But shield is pretty nifty. Granted, there's this weird card called Muzzle. There's this card called Muzzle. Granted, if you're playing this in a Meave deck, you're not concerned about Muzzle, right? Because... Yeah, you're just not concerned because you boost it. So, like, Ethne normally would be able to ping it down, but if it has shield, you have to ping it twice, and that's a lot. So, yeah. Uh, somebody said Melee. So, Vandegriff in the game is Melee. I'm assuming this is, like... Yeah, but, like, you wouldn't lose the resilience if your opponent, like, moved it to the back row. Because it's a status. Get some water. I'll get some water right after this. Uh, but, yeah, it is starting to break. Um, yeah, I think people are going to play this. This is pretty good. Like, really good. Uh, it's, like, a pretty good finisher. If you're getting blood or you're bleeding and you play this towards the end, it'll stick the majority of the time. Because nobody's going to hold a muzzle for this. Because they're typically going to muzzle a botchling before this. So... This card's scary. 
I think this card will see play. This card's really good. Huh? Vander... Oh. <laughs> Alright, chat. What card am I thinking of? What card am I thinking of? Lambert Swordmaster! Destroy an enemy unit with resilience! Wow! Maybe this card actually sees play. Oh, baby. Um, I mean, it could. If people are running this in every deck and people are playing uh, Gabor in every deck, maybe. I highly doubt it, but it is technically possible and you will get blown out by it. Um, I do want to point out Purify is really good against this card. If you're playing Nilfgaard, I think Purify is auto-include. Um, so if you remember earlier on, Kira gives vitality and can give like large amounts of vitality. If you purify the vitality, it loses it. If you purify Vandegrift, uh, it loses the shield and the resilience. The resilience is a status. Um, purify is going to be very strong in this meta. Uh, Vandegrift's blade ability change to deploy boost an allied unit by six. Oh, whenever you play a knight, boost it by one. Um, doesn't it currently boost by three or four? Oh, it's boost an allied knight by two whenever you play knight boost by two. This is boost an allied unit by six. It is an allied unit, not a knight, so that's better. Whenever you play a knight boosted by one. Yeah. So if you're playing a lot of knights, it's worse. But this deploy effect is pretty good. So typically before you would play it on turn one and you would never get the initial boost. So this, this is better. Um... But this being one instead of two is kind of awkward. I would have preferred them to do boost an allied unit by like three or four and then make it boost by one, uh, two instead. Um, perhaps. So if you remember, I said maybe there'll be a deck that runs Avalok the Sage and Portal because of the new 4P cards. Um, you could play this as well as a second um, artifact to work with, assuming you can run enough knights. Best power we talked about earlier. Um, so she no longer does four damage, which kind of sucks if you're playing her for removal, but she's more likely to stick because she has a bigger body. Um, and she'll stick around more often, which, you know, that's never a bad thing. Uh, Visigurd added formation. Isn't that really good? So Visigurd is the card that gains charges for every boosted unit. Typically, the problem with this card is when you played it, um, your opponent would kill it or lock it or do something. Right now, you can immediately get the value. So if you're playing a heavy boost deck, this card's actually really good because you immediately get all the charges uh, and you can immediately go off. Uh, this is actually pretty significant. Um, if you're playing a Meave deck, you probably play this card alongside with it because it's flexible damage pings. It's actually quite good. Um, Kalanthi Visigurd into your Scorch. Yeah, but it means you're not playing Meave, so probably not worth. Winch Provision... Oh, but I loved Winch. Uh, change primary category to Warfare ability. Change to boost an ally by three and give it two charges. Really? Okay. Um, well, if you're playing a Warfare deck with Siege Engines, this card's pretty good. It's a five. Potentially seven if you're hitting Hubert or Voltest Pride. And it's Warfare. So, yeah, auto-include in a Warfare deck. Outside of a Warfare resupply deck, it'll see no play. And last but not least, oh, Runestone is now five provisions. <laughs> Yay! Lucas, thank you so much for the five months. Welcome back. I'm going to grab some water really quickly. If you can't tell already, my voice is kind of disappearing. So, let me grab some water. I will be right back. And we can finally move on to the best faction in the game. One second.
Alrighty. <clears throat> Check Austri's Twitter. It looks like they'll rework other factions. Yeah, but that'll be in time, right? My guess is that's not happening tomorrow. Did the music stop? Nope, there it is. All right, Scoia'tael. BME. Power change from 1 to 3. Damage 4 to 3. Remove reach. Added range restriction. So this card no longer sucks. Um, granted, it still does have the condition, which is no other units need to be on the row other than the unit you are hitting. Um, so if they have only one unit on the row, it's a 6 for 4. Cool. Um, how often will that happen? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, will I start playing this card? I don't know. I might play it in Elf Scoia'tael. It's range with row restriction. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, right? Remember, this card used to have reach. It doesn't have reach anymore. Reach doesn't exist. So you just play it on the range row and you deal three damage. Um, yeah, you probably play maybe one of these because if you play two, they'll play around the second one. Um, yeah, it might be good enough in an Elf deck. We'll see. Elf got a lot of buffs in this patch, um, but we'll get to that. So, yeah. It went from unplayable to potentially playable. Might even be good. We'll see. Brain provisions changed from seven to six. I really like this. Um, I actually played Brain for a period of time, and I really liked her. Uh, the problem was the rest of the like cards in the deck were pretty bad. Um, but Dryads also got buffed in this patch, so Brain's now a seven for six. That's pretty cool. And three of those points being removal. So. I will definitely be playing a brand like Dryad Poison deck at some point. Um, probably throw a Scorcher Gigni in there. Granted, Poison's actually good this patch. I think. I think. Don't, don't hold me to that. But with Kira being insane and Northern Realms getting these really high strength bodies, Poison might actually be good enough to like rotate into this meta. Uh, does BME kill Milva? It didn't before, so I doubt it does now. So I don't think so. Dennis Cranmer power change from 3 to 4. Nice little buff. Um, doesn't change much. I mean, uh, is Dennis 7 provisions? Oh, he's 8. Okay. So, I mean, he breaks even on play. He's an 8 for 8. I mean, if you're looking for just raw value, I suppose it's okay. Uh, typically, you want to play this when you're stacking the back row. Or if you're playing a dwarf deck. Uh, both of those decks already played it. So, yeah. Good card. Archer, three to four. This is huge. Um, I've been wanting this change for the longest time. The reason being is, well, if you've ever watched my stream, I love Shiru. Uh, the problem with playing Shiru and Archers is, well, Archers are three and Shiru is three, which means, yes, Archers can line up threes for Shiru. Uh, it also puts a three on the board, which is quite bad. Now, it being a four, it doesn't do that. So you can play this card in a Shiru deck and not cry. So, yes, Obviously, it is a very good card outside of uh, that Shiro deck. It was auto-included in most Scoia'tael decks because the the flexibility on it is quite nice. Uh, yeah, it is a, what, 6 for 5? Yep, auto-include. Every Scoia'tael deck. Great card. Uh, Bomber, provision change from 5 to 4. Um, this card sucks, and the card still sucks. Two random damage is terrible. Uh, Bowman, power change from 2 to 3. Well, not playing it in my Shearer deck. Uh, is this card good enough to play in an off deck? It has max value of 6 if they play a card on the ranged row. It's okay. The only deck I could imagine this card would see play in is exactly an off deck. Outside of an exactly an off deck, I don't think this card will see any play. Dryad Matron, power change from 3 to 4. Uh, Dryad Matron is the one that, like, goes to the right and boosts the rightmost unit by one. This card's really good. This card on play is a 5 for 5 that gets plus one every turn. That's good. Uh, if you play a Sentinel before it, the elf that boosts a unit whenever a unit is moved, uh, and then you play a Dryad Matron, it starts at 5 strength. Um, if you have two of them, it starts at 6 strength. Six strength is unkillable. Uh, unkillable, I'm basically saying five is the limit. Over five and you break the cap because that's the muzzle range. Um, Dryad Matron is really good. Like, you just play it because typically your opponent's not going to have four damage. And if they do, well, you broke even on play. Which, granted, breaking even on play isn't as good anymore. Uh, but the upside is 
Well, you get plus one every turn forever. So, yeah, it's pretty good. And I can play this in a Shiro deck, which is Pog. So, yeah, I'm going to play this with Brain. Um, Dryad Ranger, power change from two to three. They are buffing um, Poison. So, this is a bigger buff than you think. I'm going to keep referring to this card because I love this card so much now. Shiro. Um, I've played Dryad Rangers in a Shiro deck. There's only one problem. Because it has Harmony and it's at two... When you played the Shiru, it went to three, and then you killed it, and that sucks. But now it's at three, and it goes to four. Doesn't die, and that's important. Um, also, on play, this is a three that deals two, uh, which is a five for five. Granted, five for five isn't good, but it also has harmony. So it being three strength from two strength makes it harder because most of the death blow cards are two death blow, uh, which means it's going to be much harder to kill this. So you can kind of look at this as a fledgling uh for one more provision but you get the one extra power and well if you draw two of them you get to kill a card with poison so that might actually be good enough to just play in most decks because five for five with harmony is okay removal is good in scoia and if you draw both you get to kill a tall card and tall cards seem to be pretty good or pretty popular in this uh patch because of northern realms so yeah we'll see I actually think Dryad Ranger is pretty good now. Dwarven Mercenary, power change from 3 to 4. Um, really? Okay. Um, whoops. accidentally pressed a key on my keyboard. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> these cards were already pretty good when you pulled it with Justice. Now, they're even bigger. Uh, yeah, if your opponent plays two of these with Justice and then Fran Justices again for two more, you probably lose unless you have Epidemic because, yeah, you're taking four a turn every turn. Um, I think Dwarf Squirtel will actually be good. This is an insane buff. This is good enough that you could just throw on the beginning of a round and it'll probably stick at four strength. Uh, this, yeah, this is really good. This is like scary good. Um, and like a lot of dwarfs are getting buffed too. So yeah, dwarf square is probably going to be good. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Dwarven skirmisher, finally. Um, added melee restriction, but it no longer has reach one because reach is no longer in the game, which means you can finally hit the ranged row. Oh, feels good, man. You don't have to play a one. Playing a one always felt bad because your opponent would just row stack on the range row. Now you can finally play this for full value all the time. Finally. Granted, it is only a five for four, but three damage is significant. It is removal. It is a four provision card. It is a dwarf. All of these things are good. Um, yep, this card saw a lot of play. Now it'll see more play. Probably auto include outside of like an elf deck. Good card. Elven Scout. Power change from three to four. This is the... Artifact one every time, or the trap one, whenever a trap flips. Uh, it was auto-include in Eldane. It'll still be auto-include outside of Eldane. Won't see any play. Yep. Swordmaster, three to four. Yes, card's finally playable. Um, it is still going to be row locked, I'm assuming, but four strength means it doesn't die to everything on the planet. Um, yep, this is really good. So there's a lot of elf buffs. Uh, I'll just say it ahead of time. I actually think Elf Squiatel might be good enough. Might. I'm still not 100% sure. It is going to be contingent. So the problem with Elf Squiatel is the same problem it's been for the past, well, forever. Uh, it didn't really have a finisher. It kind of does have a finisher now. We'll get into it in a bit. Uh, and the other finisher has been like Scorch and Shear. Granted, Shear's been kind of awkward because you played a lot of 3-point elves, but the 3-point elves got buffed. And on top of that, um, people are going to be playing engines more frequently, which means Shiru is better. Uh, and the tall meta is back with Kira, so Scorch might be good enough. Um, it might. Elf Squiatel might crack tier 2. Doubtful tier 1, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, this is a great buff. You can start playing this in non-elf decks because it is a 4 for 4 and it gets more value if your opponent doesn't remove it. Yeah, good card. Elven War Dancer, provision change 5 to 4. Uh, this is the card that if it's boosted, it does 3 damage instead of 1 damage. Uh, on its own, it's a 3 that deals 1. Um, 
I mean, you could play a 4 for 4. That's pretty bad. It's really good in Philavandral. Sure. Um, like, auto-include in Philavandral. Like, super-duper good in Philavandral. But what if you don't play Philavandral? Then it kind of sucks. So, yeah. Pretty straightforward. Uh, unless we get some kind of card that can boost cards in hand other than Sursa. Like, we need a bronze that can boost a unit in hand. Uh, if that happens, this card will see play. Until then, this will strictly be a Philavandral card. Uh, I will say Philavandral might actually be good enough next patch. The reason I say this is because Mahakam Defender is also getting buffed. And these two cards were stapled in Philavandral. Both of them are getting reduced by one. So that's an extra 4p to mess around with. So we'll see. Um, yeah, FOB provision 9 to 8. Uh, we're seeing all the tutors in every faction go from 9 to 8, so this was kind of expected. Forest Whisper, power change from 3 to 4. This is the other Dryad that gives poison. Um, I can play this card in the Shiro deck. Pog Champ. Uh, is poison good enough? Maybe. Actually, maybe. Uh, there are enough tall cards with Northern Realms. It's so weird to think Northern Realms is a tall faction now. But they got three really big cards. Kira, Valibor, Bloody Baron are all seven pluses uh and removing a seven is good enough so yeah poison might be strong enough we'll see uh if poison sucks then this card sucks pretty straightforward hawker healer power change from two to three so it's a five for four is a five for four good no um it's good enough in an elf deck because it has the word elf on it so it might see play in an elf deck outside an elf deck probably won't see play hawker support provisions five to four I believe this is the one that boosts by three. Yes, it is. So this card is if you have an artifact, you boost a unit by three. This is a six for four. Is a six for four good? Yes. Um, granted, you need the condition of having an artifact. But if you can meet the condition, this is actually pretty, like, really good. This is a six for, I mean, for, for like, SK, that's average. But for Squiatel, six for four is quite good. Um... Maybe you can make like an Avalok the Sage Elf deck that runs like Crushing Trap or... Oh, I, okay. I could see it. You run Sage, two Crushing Traps, 1k Fables for um, Call of the Forest. Because Call of the Forest is really good in Elf deck. And Scorch. If you run a deck like that, this card's playable. The idea is you play three artifacts. Um, you play one of the artifacts in one of the rounds and Hawker Support gets value. And it's a 6 for 4. And it's an Elf. Is that good enough? Maybe. I'll try it. It seems okay. Isengrim. Super duper buff. This is the biggest buff for Squiatel this patch. Uh, this card currently, I mean, it is six provisions, or sorry, is nine provisions and four strength. It went up two power and went down a provision. This is a three stat slash provision change. This is, this is huge. Hawker support is a human. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well, then I take every back thing back I just said. Uh, maybe it'll see play in... I don't know. I'll figure something out. Um, Isengrim is really good now. I mean, Isengrim was kind of a staple in a heavy elf deck. But now it's even better. On play, if you have zero cards on the board, it is a 6 for 8. And it's an engine. Every time you play an elf, it gets boosted. Um, 6 is actually pretty big. It's hard to kill a 6. Uh, if you, like, this is a really good finisher in round one, and if you're running Call of the Forest, uh, you, you tutor this out. Granted, it is going to be a nine. It's going to be, like, susceptible to tall removal, but, like, it is a tremendous play. Uh, this, this is really, really good. Um, like, you can just play this in round three, and it's just good enough. Also, fun fact, if you play this, and then you play Shiru, my favorite card, uh, it goes to four, and you can kill fours. Pog Champ. Um... Yeah, you could actually do that because all your fours are now fives because you just played Isengrim. Is that good enough? Maybe. Maybe a Shiru elf deck with Scorch as your win con slash Shiru is good enough. We'll see. I will definitely be trying it tomorrow. 100%. Uh, Mahakam Defenders uh, went down a provision. A little scary because this card's already really good. Now it's better. So very good in Philavandral. Um, this card is good enough that you might actually be able to play this in non-dwarf decks and non-philavandral decks. What I mean by this is you might be able to play this 
in like your typical mid-range ethne list with two agitators or or okay maybe you play one of these so you play the two agitators and you typically buff skag but if you hit a defender you just buff it you buff it to six you play it and you just start getting value i can see this card seeing play uh outside of its traditional list in the traditional list it's obviously much better because it is cheaper. Mahakam Guard Power Change from 2 to 3, Provision 5 to 4. Ooh, double buff. Uh, this card currently is, like, playable in a dwarf deck. But now it's, like, really, really good. Um, power Change from 2 to 3, Provisions 5 to 4. Woo! Uh, you play this with 8 dwarfs on the row. It's 8 plus 3 is 11 for 4. Is 11 for 4 good? Yeah, that's, like, Syndicate level good. That's, like, super duper good. Um, yeah, really good in the dwarf deck. Like, this pushes dwarf decks pretty hard. Plus two is pretty significant. Typically, if you play this early on, it was pretty bad. Now, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, this card's great. If you're playing a dwarf deck, you have to play this card. This card, I, I actually think dwarf decks are going to be good. Like, dwarf decks were already okay. It was just missing a few points. This plus the Dennis plus the Mahakam Defenders might actually be enough to push them into like tier one. Very good. Melena, cooldown two to one. So this is the card I've been uh, referring to throughout the stream. Um, Melena currently has Zeal, I believe. And she has two cooldown, which is not great. But if she has cooldown one, well, you play it like a Dragoon, you move a unit, and if they don't kill it, you get to keep moving cards every single turn. Um, if you're playing like Teruvial... Or you're playing Lacerate, you can play Melena, get tons of value for row stacking, like Crushing Trap. Ah, this deck's actually falling together. The the double Crushing Trap, Ava Sage with 1k Fables and Scorch. And Melena makes it better, because you get to stack. This deck could actually work. Huh. Yeah, this could actually be legit. Um, Cool. Yeah, so this is this is what what is Melena's stats right now? She's a she's a four for six. So she you have to be hitting multiple ticks for it to be worth it. But if you can, it's pretty good. Uh, Runestone talked about this earlier. Uh, outside of exactly a Dana list because the Dana can utilize the uh, alchemy tag. Outside of exactly Dana, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Panther provision six to five. Finally. Um, this is a six for five against every deck that's not Squiatel. Is this card good? Ooh, it's a yeah, track. six for five is pretty good for Squiatel with removal attached to it. By Jay the Slayer, thank you for the four months. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, Panther's pretty good. Uh, definitely going to be playing two copies of this in any kind of Dana list. Uh, probably going to be playing one or two copies in an Ethne removal list. Problem is, it's three strength, which makes me sad for Shiru. Um, but other than that, yeah, pretty good card. Sage, power change from three to four. Uh, this card sucks, and now this card... Sucks a little less. Um, it's okay. Ideally, with this kind of card, you want to play a no unit deck. The problem with the no unit deck is, well, you can't play no unit decks anymore because you have to play units. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe there's a list with, like, I mean, the deck that played this used to play Sarah and Johnny, too, and both of those cards get nerfed. So, probably not very good. Uh, Saskia, provision change from 98. 928, not 98. 98 would be kind of expensive. Um, well, this card went from sucks to sucks, so this card still sucks. Sheldon Skaggs added melee restriction. Um, it no longer has reach. You have to play it melee. I like this because it means your opponent, like if they're playing Gigni, they can go counterplay. Uh, they can assume that there'll be a large Skaggs at some point, and they can get ready by like moving a large unit from a range to the melee row. So it, it, it adds... Um, thought element i don't know what i'm trying to say here it, it, I, I like the fact that it's melee restricted um it's bad if you're row stacking the range row but just don't row stack the melee uh the range row to reveal power three to four uh this card's actually playable now it's an eight for eight worst case scenario which is i mean nowadays it's not good enough but for squiatel that's good enough because squiatel gets the short end of the stick when it comes to elves so um yeah 
it's good enough. Um, if you're playing Melina and Dragoons and you're row stacking, you can get more value. So that's the idea. You want to hit a large row, get lots of points. You want to be hitting like seven to nine units. And you're looking at like a 13 cap for eight, which is quite good. So yeah, uh, auto include in any kind of elf deck. Treant Mantis, Pog Champ. So Treant Mantis is going down one provision. Um, I already mentioned earlier, uh, I think Poison might be decent enough. The fact that Poison got buffed a little is pretty good. Uh, Treant Mantis was a pretty core aspect of those Poison decks, and now it's better. Uh, it's six provisions. It is a six for six, uh, and that's just, well, good. Six for six. I mean, now you can play Swallow six for five, but this is six for six that your opponent can't interact with for one turn, and it has the potential of being a good Poison target. So, yeah, I mean, you play this in any kind of Poison deck. Will you play this outside of a Poison deck? It's a nice proactive play against SK, so yeah. I mean, I don't mind playing this card. I'll play this card. You don't have to play this card. I'll play this card. Fry Head Brigade, provision change from 6 to 5. Card isn't over-costed anymore. Very good for a Brewer deck. Um, this is the card that pings for 2, and every time you move it, it gets plus 2. Uh, it's good in a Melena deck. Uh, if you can get Melena to stick, and you play this Brigade, and it doesn't die, uh, you just start getting 2 points every turn. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. I actually might be able to play this in an elf deck because it's a five for eh, it's a five for five, but it has synergy with dragoon. I don't know. I don't know if this is good enough to play in an elf deck. Probably not, but I'll think about it. Uh, right head dragoons. So right head dragoons got nerfed. They went from four to five, four to five. So it's you're, you're still getting the same stat line. The difference is it's not four provisions anymore. Before it was auto include for four provisions. Now it's auto include at five provisions because movement is like number one removal now. So yeah, auto include still a very good card. Rye head officer provision change from five to two or five to four. Uh, auto include an elf deck. It's a three that deals two damage, so it's a five for four, which is good enough for elf. Uh, outside of elf, it's probably okay. Uh, the split treant mantras is just saying that uh, the one that flips over is a, is like they're both six, right? Like I don't know if you have to if you call of the forest it and decoy it, if you call of the forest it back into your deck, it's six, not seven. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, sappers are now five power, so this happened uh, to SK as well. It's a five for five on play. So if you need artifact removal, it's quite good. If you don't need the artifact removal, it's bad. Weeping Willow, Pog Champ, six power. Wow. Uh, I personally would have preferred them to bring the provision down, not up uh, for power because typically it walks into tar removal. So this doesn't really help. So I think they did it incorrectly here. They should have gone down in provision. Regardless, um, uh, it's okay. It's what, a six for seven? How much is Willow? Six for seven. Eh, it's okay on Philavandrel. If you're playing smug, I'm actually pretty disappointed they didn't buff smugglers. If they buff smugglers, I would play this. Um, but they didn't. They forgot to buff smugglers, so I don't know if I'll play this. But it is better, I guess. Uh, Yaven power three to four. Um, auto include an elf deck outside of an elf deck. Zero play. So overall, from Squatel. Elves are going to be better. Is it good enough to be tier 1 slash 2? We'll see. Um, I'm excited to play Poison. I think Poison will be decent. I can play a Poison. So you remember like a month ago I came to you guys and I said I had a really good deck for you. It was a Scorch, Poison, Dryad list. Turned out to be not so good just because the Poison cards were pretty underwhelming and Shira wasn't very good in that time of the meta. Well, that's no longer the case. So, yeah, I'm kind of hoping that uh, I will be able to play a Poison deck. Again, thank you for gifting a Tier 1 sub to Kazu9. Welcome, Kazu. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. I don't know how good Poison will be. I think it'll be okay because of Northern Realms Talk cards. But once again, that's the type of thing where we have to see how the meta settles out. Uh, but I am very excited for Elf Squayatel. Elf Squayatel got a lot of buffs. A lot of buffs. Um, basically, take every Elf card that exists right now and add plus one. That's basically what happened. Yep, so that is Squayatel. Water break. Dragoon no longer draws from Portal. Okay. How impactful is that, though?
right? You played Portal and Eldane. And Eldane, you didn't mind if you hit Dragoon. Uh, predictions for next month regarding Tier 1 decks. Northern Realms. Nilfgaard. Here we go. Alba Armored Calvary. Power change from 3. Can we just skip Nilfgaard? Nobody plays Nilfgaard, right? <sighs> we'll do Nilfgaard. All right, so this is a card that locks. It went from three to four. It is better. Locks are going to be pretty good this meta um, because removal is more expensive. So if you're playing Nilfgaard, you're probably playing this card. Alba Spearman, power change from two to three. Initial damage change from two to one. Um, that's interesting. They didn't want any faction to be able to do four damage on a bronze. That's okay. Yeah, okay. I guess um, it's kind of a nerf. Uh, Vigo provision change from 9 to 8. That's nice. You get to play cowboy. He's not a cowboy, but he is a boy that makes... Or pigs, not cows. Why did I call him cowboy? Okay, whatever. Um, if you're playing the card, he's better. If you're playing assimilate, he's... You were playing him anyways, so... Yeah, he's okay, I guess. Uh, assassination provision change from 6 to 5. It's good for Ardal. Good in general, actually. Uh, removal getting cheaper for Nilfgaard is... Typically a good thing because Nilfgaard likes to play removal. So, yeah. Um, the real question is, will you start playing this card outside of Ardol? It did see a tiny bit of play. It actually might be worth it. Um, if removal is getting more expensive on, like, bronze body, uh, this might be good enough. Yeah, I, I, I could see maybe a one of, maybe a two of if Northern Realms is really dominant. Kahir, power change from four to five. Still unplayable. Celiac, change from 3 to 5. Still sucks. Combat Engineer, provisions change from 5 to 4. What does this card do? It's uh, it's the same one as uh, the Squirtle one. If you control an artifact, boost self uh, instead of boost a unit. Uh, yeah, I mean, how many artifact decks do you play in Nilfgaard? Not many, but... If you can run a deck that runs, like, four plus artifacts, then sure, you can play this card. Courier, power change from four to five, provisions four to five. Eh? Oh. Uh. Why? Isn't this a nerf? This is the card that you can put, uh, choose one of three and put it on the top for either player. Yeah, it makes Portal more viable, but how often were you playing Courier in a Portal deck? I don't know. I mean, if that is exactly the case, then yeah, sure, it's better. Um, always? Okay, well, if the answer is always, then it's a buff. Otherwise, it just makes you have one less option for 4P cards. Uh, Cynthia provision change from 8 to 7. Okay. Runestone only affects assimilate list. Experimental remedy, alchemy change to tactic. So I believe with this change right here, Ardol can now steal a seven. Um, before there were not enough tactics, I believe they were one shy from being able to steal a seven. So if you run every single tactic but one, you can steal a seven. Um, is that good? Unit limit? No, you just play 26 cards, you silly. Just play 26 cards in your seven steal. Like, come on, chat. Come on, get with it. Just play more units in the deck. There's no cap on cards in the deck. Just play more units, right? 25, just add more units. No biggie. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Steel 6 wasn't very good. Steel 7, even if you had more units to your deck, it's probably not very good. Um, it's a, it's a high leader swing. It's 14, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's very good. Experimental Remedy is what? Play Bronze from your opponent's deck? Uh, I guess it, you have more flexibility when you're choosing tactics. That's kind of cute. False Siri as agent. This is good for what? Doedric? The the card that shuffle or like thins your deck. 
Uh, Fangs of the Empire, power change from three to four. Huh. Okay. I mean, nobody really played poison, but they have poison. Nah, the, the problem is there's not enough. There's not enough poison cards in Nilfgaard. And playing Puffball is pretty bad. So, like, if you could play four Fangs of the Empire in your deck, I think it would be good enough. Like, yeah, you could play this and M here, but, like, that's pretty Papiga. But you could do it. Um, yeah. Fire Scorpion, power three to four. Pretty significant. You'll auto-include this in any kind of Ardle deck. It's kind of cute. Killing a four is going to be hard. It, it really seems like CDPR wants engine meta. Like, we, we, we are walking into a super-duper engine meta where everybody plays engines that nobody can kill. And it's whoever can out-engine the other person. Which, you know what the counter to all these engine decks is going to be? <laughs> no unit decks. No unit decks with cards like Epidemic and Scorch are going to be very good against all these engine decks. So, uh, yeah. Look forward to no unit decks, I suppose. Uh, Frangilla, power change from 9 to 8. Uh, I mean, this is the mage card, right? I played this card, like, once. It was okay in, like, a Regis deck with Calvite, I suppose. Like, it's okay. Cool. Uh, Hefty Hog, power change from 3 to 4. Yeah, your opponent can't swear to it anymore. Yeah, it'll be harder to kill. Good in a tactic deck. Uh, Enforcer's added range restriction. Okay, that sucks. If your opponent has movement, your card that probably didn't live will do nothing. Okay. Diplomacy provisions change 6 to 5. That's significant. This makes running a 5 or a 6 tactic uh, Ardol deck a little easier. You have two extra provisions to work with, uh, and it's not as bad. Pyro Golem provision change from 8 to 7. Okay. Joaquim changed from 11 to 10. Okay. Magni Division power changed from 2 to 3. Uh, Magni Division used to be a 3 back in the day. Um, starts at 4 when you play it. Um, Pew Pew Boy doesn't kill it anymore. Marauder only does 3 damage. This will go to 4. So it's out of Marauder. Yeah, I think Magni Division, Division will see play again. You play it in round 1. You play a 1 of maybe 2. Uh, yeah, I think this card will see play. Manganel added range dead uh, restriction. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Didn't really see any play, but okay. Master of Disguise added melee restriction. This is actually a big nerf. Um, this card used to have reach, but you could at least hit their melee cards if they moved it to the back row. Now you can't even do that. So this is a nerf. Um, but the card's still no play, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Menagerie Keeper, power change from two to three. This is the card that if you have a tactic, you hit a unit and you give it bleed and it does two damage. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing a tactic Ardolus, you can play it. Otherwise, you're not going to play it. Meno, tutor cards have gone from nine to eight. Nausicaa Brigade, provision change from five to four. Removed reach. Okay. Um... Typically, you saw this in, like, a Shoop deck because you needed one-ofs. Um, it's actually not bad. Damage a boosted enemy unit by three. It's three strength, so it's a six for four condition. You could play a one-of of these. It's good against tactical advantage. Sure, it's okay. I think more often than not, the four provision... Yeah, I don't know the name of it. The one that pings for four, if it's above six or higher, um, is probably better. But yeah, you can play Nausicaa uh, Brigade. Nausicaa Sergeant, power change from three to four. Jeez, so many Nausicaa cards. Uh, yeah, so this is really good now. I mean, the card was already auto-included in most decks. Now it starts at four strength. Why would you not play this? Wow, I mean, it's a good card. It was really good before. Really good with Portal. Yeah, you play it. Auto-include before. Auto-include now. Very strong card. Nilf Guardian Knight power change from 6 to 7. Oh, boy. It's a 7 for 5. Woo! Turn 1, 7. Uh, yeah, this card was typically like a one-of in some Nilf Guard decks. Now it's better. I will play this card because it's a 7 for 5 and it's 
Good. Um, yep. Still a good card. Uh, Palmer in. Provision change from 8 to 7. Okay. Rainfarn. Okay. Recruit. Oh, it's the Potato Boy. Uh, Potato Boy is a 6 for 4. That's not bad. Uh, if you're playing a soldier deck, Potato Boy is good. If you're not playing a potato deck or a soldier deck, then it's bad. So, yeah. Roderick. Ooh, they buffed Roderick. Pog Champ. Um, I mean, this card was already really good, right? Uh, I, uh, okay. Okay. It's a good card if if you need the consistency. It is strictly better than Prince now. Um, so if you're playing a Shoop deck, it was pretty good. If you're not playing a Shoop deck, it's debatable. Uh, it's okay in Assimilate, I think, just because you can play this into Sword uh, and go again and thin your deck, which is cute. Um, I don't know. If you need the consistency, sure. Uh, Rot Tosser, Power Change from 3 to 4. Yeah. I mean, okay, so like, if you play two Fangs and two Rot Tossers, and you queue into Northern Realms, and they have no self damage engines, aka they're not playing Arbalist. I think Arbalist can ping. Can Arbalist ping their own units? I don't know. Um, and you play Rot Tosser in between like a Kira and whatever big card next to it, and they can only block one of them, and then you Fangs, then it's pretty good. Will that happen? I don't know. I don't know how often Northern Realms is going to see play. I assume it's going to see a lot of play. I think Northern Realms is going to be very good. Um, is it good enough to see, like, conditional poison? Yeah, it's debatable. Uh, standard bearer power change from three to four. Um, boost self by one for each boosted enemy unit. Oh. Well, I mean... If people are playing Meave Boost, then this card is really good. How many people are going to play Meave Boost? I don't know. Question is, is Meave Boost on par or slightly worse than Full Test to see play? Maybe. Um, this would be an interesting tech if Meave sees a lot of play. If not, this card is still pretty bad. Swears Provisions 10 to 8. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Um, yeah, so Swears was like close to auto include in every Nilfgaard deck because it was like a 9. And you could deny certain cards and, like, deny engines. And it just went down 2p. Yeah. This is a 9 for 8. That can steal engines, steal roach and mirrors. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's worse with Vivian, I suppose. But other than that, yeah. Big buff. There's no 3p units anymore. Uh, Make them. Just play the thingy. Play Helgi and Scorpion in your Ardalus and Swears on. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe there are no more threes and you can never steal something worth it and then it's not actually a good card. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. If finding a three deems impossible... Like, if it's impossible to find a three, then I guess this is pretty bad. But I doubt that's going to be the case. Uh, the Guardian, power change from four to three. This is the card that comes out of uh, Cynthia. Um... I don't know. Do you want to play Cynthia? Probably not. But if you do, it's a little better now. Pog. Tibor! Provisions change from 10 to 9. Yay. Guys, actually, Tibor is super broken now. This is a game changer. You get one extra provision for your chat. I'm telling you right now, you should all play Tibor. So I can get maximum value on my poison cards and Scoia'tael. Attorney Shale Mart, provisions change from 9 to 8. If you're playing a Assimilate deck, it's pretty good, I suppose. Outside of that deck, probably didn't see much play. Um, is this enough to push it into viability? Maybe. Maybe. In the Assimilate deck, I would say yes. Outside of an Assimilate deck, probably not. Attorney Josh, boost damage from 3 to 4. Ooh. Um, 4 damage. Wow. Uh, this is a 4 provision, 4 damage card they would never have printed this except well times have changed we have six for fours now um auto include an ardle still outside of ardle probably won't see too much play the exception would be you want to play like a no unit deck and you want to just kill everything in which case you play this card granted if you're playing that deck you're probably playing ardle um yeah it's good removal so if you like removal it's a good card not to mention you can always just 
boost to unit by four. Uh, Vandemar power change from two to three. Yay, more Shiro targets. Um, I mean, if you're playing super duper Lock Usurper, then Vandemar is just better, right? Novice power change from four to five. So it's a five for five shuffle or like swap a card. Uh, I mean, any deck that was playing the card before is slightly buffed, but I don't know of any deck that played this card. So yeah, provisions on Vilgefortz 10 to nine. Sure, is it enough to make it competitively viable? Nope. Zarthisius power change from four to five, doesn't matter. Syndicate, eavesdrop, profit four to five. Why? I mean, this card was already good, but now it's better. Thinning a card was, our, whatever. It was a proactive card and it thinned. I don't know, whatever. I thought this card was already pretty good, but now it's better because Syndicate needs buffs because they suck right now. Uh, Eternal Fire Inquisitor, power change from two to three. Who? Um, damage an enemy unit by two death bush, spawn a fire sworn zealot. So it's a three now. So it's a seven for five. Okay, that's fine. That's on power level with other cards with the buffs. Eternal Fire Priest power change from three to four, jeez. Fire Priest, three to four. Uh, whenever you spawn, oh, this was the combo deck. Yeah, I mean, it's slightly better. I mean, if you're playing Igor, it's a lot of extra points. It's like an extra like five points. That's kind of cool. Um, Fire Sworn Scribe, jeez. I don't know the name of any of these cards. Oh, another combo card. Okay, um, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, if you're playing the gimmicky deck, your deck is a little better. Cool. Uh, added melee restriction. Yeah, that makes sense. The fact that this came out and it didn't have melee restriction was kind of weird, I think. Um, it was one of the few engines, like, granted, it's not broken, so it's not, it wasn't really played in Syndicate, but, like, now it's, like, on par with other engines from other factions. Knife! Knife? Knife? What's knife? Uh, I don't know what knife is. I just typed in knife into the deck builder and nothing happened. Oh, Furco. Oh, Tutor Boy. Okay, Tutor Boy went down. Sure. I don't know why it's spelt knife, but... Sure. Okay, cool. I mean, this is kind of across the board. All, all uh, Tutor cards in every faction went down to eight. Profit L Lol Boida. Provisions 10, uh, change from 10 to 9. Uh, this does nothing for Syndicate. It's slightly better in Northern Realms. Yay. Sly Seductress. Power change from 3 to 4. Uh, this is kind of significant. Um, killing these is going to be a little harder. And they get a lot of value if left unchecked. This card actually might start seeing play. Or at least the uh, 6 provision 6 do that like spawns one of these. This could actually see some play. I don't know why I said actually like that. But, uh, yeah. This might see some play from now on. Um, it's our 4 for 4 that grows. It's similar to Cav in uh, Northern Realms. Good with Portal. Very good with Portal. Um, if people aren't able to do 4 damage immediately, this card will be good. Sakura's Karma's favorite card. This is like the best balance patch of all time for karma karma like oh he's so happy yay sakura is slightly better um still not gonna see any play unless you queue into karma fix a rare issue where it's not possible oh they fix barnabas pog champ um okay isabel sometimes didn't draw a card um developers comments oh no how much Oh, it's not that much. Okay. Uh, we've increased the power. I don't want to read this. My voice hurts. <laughs> Can you guys read it? Many cards should be more efficient now. Um, with this trend being most obvious, uh, cards at the lower end of the provision cost. Uh, high damage. Yeah, so we saw this a lot. Bronzes in particular. Yeah, okay. So I've been saying this the entire time. Uh, bronzes no longer do full damage. It's three or fewer. We wanted to limit high damage. Okay. Uh, yeah. So small pings is fine. So if you want to trade like two bronzes to kill like an engine, that's okay. Uh, reach and row restriction. So reach is gone. 
And they replaced it with road restrictions. Yeah. Northern Realms overall and respective faction identities. Greedy approach to amassing points. If you leave one or two engines on the board, they can run away with the point value very quickly. We don't want to change that. Northern Realms will remain the greediest faction. I think AQ is... Eh, okay, I, I guess it's... Sure. However, we believe some tweaks to their floor and ceiling is in order, no pun intended. Adding from... Apart from adding two new categories, Northern Realms will now have access to three unique keywords. PogChamp. Uh, I think the biggest change to Northern Realms is the fact that they added a bunch of very expensive gold cards that are actually powerful and aren't super gimmicky. Uh, Falibor, Kira, and Bloody Baron are the three that come to mind. These are all... and They have high bodies. Like, they're all seven strength. There aren't very many seven strength cards in the game, right? So the ones that I can think of are like... Ice Giant. <laughs> yeah, I don't know very many seven drops in the game. Um, yeah, uh, most of the expensive cards, like, okay, let's take Sakras or Loboida. Uh, these cards are expensive. They have high bodies, but they get value later on if they stick on the board. These cards just get value when you smash them on the board. They're just super high value. It's like, it, it would be like an Oak slightly tuned down so the ceiling isn't as high but like the value you get from it is really good and there's three of them three uh yeah i think those three cards are good enough that you could honestly probably play them in every deck they're just really good um at least cure cure 100 percent falivor if you can fit it i would say it's definitely worth it uh bloody baron maybe not but i think we're going to be in a pretty tall uh meta where people are going to be playing some boosts so i think bloody baron's actually worth it uh warfare category one of factions to not only rely on units but also special cards um okay sure uh they'll expand on this in the future so i guess that's what you hope for um sure uh, i suppose zeal inspire formation yeah, so formation. I'm very glad they added formation to a bunch of cards. It's kind of cool. Uh, shield is a really nice status that goes nicely with Northern Realms. Wants to achieve... Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah, that only took me three hours and 30 minutes. Which is 30 minutes shorter than I thought it would. Pog champ. Uh, yeah, that is everything. That is all 256 changes. Pog. That took a while, but we did it. We're at the end. Reread all, please. All right. 